playoff time. Still on the Wednesday of the uh, after the final week of the season for this final year, and a six and three mark. Now for Elgin, it's a pride factor. Coach Stevens knows the squad is one and five. This very well could make the second half of the season if he could knock off a Larkin Royal and stop that uh, ongoing adventure to the playoffs. Absolutely right, and they're going to come out uh, basically with a running Good attack. Evening, Their big gun Matt Welcome Becker, five four, one hundred fifty, five eleven rather, one hundred fifty nice pounds senior Marcy running back. Also, they'll go to Demetrius Marcy Roberts, who's had forty. Two two carries for 222 yards. Elgin he's a state qualifier in track, and he's a big gainer. He can have breakaway speed. Uh, two big runs earlier this year, game. one against West Aurora, a 90-yard kickoff return, and also against Wamonzi Valley. He had a 90-yard kickoff one, return sandwich between a 74-yard run against Lake James Park. So Demetrius Johnson. can break a few tackles. Tackle, However, we might not see him in the starting lineup as Corey Hodges Bob is due Mahaley. back. Corey, of course, is the three-sport star along the same ways as Demetrius. Right. Corey's Jeremy only gained 101 Aisling. yards this year. At he played center, just defense in the game last week, Dave Paul. Bico. But he expects to come back. At He's got that bad knee. And we should see Kevin Becker and Lester. Corey, but we'll see lots right of Roberts. And Steve Gomez has had some trouble, the quarterback, as you know, Ball for the uh, Maroons this year. He's had some trouble getting his completions. 50 attempts, just 19 completions. Really, it must be a good ball Damon control McDaniel. game for Coach Stevens. He knows that. He's got to get the good blocking up front. Got Corey, maybe 25 Jeremy carries. Matt Becker, like number, contain the back, football and uh, get the clock on their side a little bit and keep Thomas, it away from Larkin. And, uh, and on the other side, Larkin's 12, coming out with their Matt quarterback, David Heiser. McDaniel, who has a junior. This is his second year starting. For the uh, Larkin Dale Royals Shaper, at quarterback, and Luke a lot of questions last year as to whether Duncan or not Damon was Ellett, mature enough to uh, handle a varsity quarterback Bosch, role for Elgin the Larkin Maroons. Royals. He had a real at shaky start receiver, uh, uh, as, as, seven, as last Matt season went on, but Kirkland. this year he seems to be much better, tackle, uh, and it's really a balanced attack. He's got Myron right Thomas with 91 Seister. carries, 486 Mark yards. Seister. And uh, guard, besides that, he himself, McDaniel, has thrown Virgil. 101 attempts. At and he's completed 27 of 101. Robert so at least Ross. they're coming out with a balanced at attack right on the Larkin Rockets. They really are. In the last couple of weeks, as they said, uh, we had scored 69 points. At We're seeing right the introduction tackle, of the starting offensive lineup Brandon for the Elgin Maroons Johnson. as they have won the coin at toss. It's a very veteran squad that Coach Stevens has here, Paul. They have uh, only, I believe, just one underclassman. Uh, make that two, Gomez. although Matt Kirkland will start at, at wide receiver, receiver, so he's a senior. Just the left Brian tackle in Knepper. Mark Seister at as a junior. Everybody else pretty seasoned out there. They've had some playing time, Corey some varsity Hodges. playing time. And, and, and here's Corey Hodges. He should get a big round of applause as he's introduced now. <laughs> and we haven't seen he's getting his teammates all around him. The Corey has had that bow knee, and he's been away. I know this could make a disappointing season for Corey if he could come back here and respond well. We got that. You were talking about the offensive line they've got Brandon Johnson at 235 Robert Ross the center at 195 and then the left tackle Mark Seister at 210 so whichever way the running backs go if it's over the right side they've got Johnson leading the way at 235 they've got Mark Seister at 210 leading the way at left tackle or if they just want to run up the middle they've got Ross at 195 and the right guard Don Miller at 195. Ryan Johnson's going to get ready to tee it up and he'll kick it away for the Larkin Royals Ryan a 6'1 170 pretty good kicker for coach Keegers troops we should say if I can say that ball far side Matt Becker the pint size running back at 5'4 in the middle you got Demetrius Roberts and kind of on the near side here we're not going to go with uh, Corey we're going to get looks like another man up there for them check that number out there on the near side as they're going to kick it and right down the center of things Roberts going to get it at about the 15 stumbles there drops the football he's going to need some help he's going to run right he heads for the middle of the field spins around brought down there Demetrius had trouble handling that ball but actually from what could be very disastrous was able to spin around and get it about 10 yards from where he first fumbled it. Tackle by Ted Jones for Larkin. The very man was number 23, David Rapp. Running back 511. Also a linebacker, so we did not see Corey there. If Corey were completely healthy, he'd be back in that position. But Corey will uh, start in the backfield, as we said. And they're also going to come away with a Deion Johnson starting out there in backfield as well. Gomez is your quarterback. He's over the center, Ross. Here's going to be Gomez running right, and he's going to get across the line of scrimmage, pick up maybe a couple yards on the far side. So seeing Deion Johnson there has had some playing time. That's kind of a surprise, at least for these reporters' eyes, I think as they get to start there. But going to move a lot of men in there. Here comes Matt Becker just like that, and Dion's out. So our, our mystery is over for after one play, Paul. <laughs> Tackle by, by Myron Thomas and Jeremy Melvin. McCune over on that far side for Larkin. Becker, as uh, Paul mentioned, is the leading seven. round gainer the for the Elgin Maroons, and a nice job throughout the entire season. And when we see the Larkin Royals on offense, Myron Thomas is coming off back-to-back 100-yard -back games. 
Second and seven it is. There's going to be a handoff, and I thought it was a fumble, but no, it's not. Not much gain there. Becker is going to get the carry. Becker is so pint-sized at 5-4, you can lose him, even if there's not a cloud of dust. Becker gained three on that play as he went again over left tackle, and Mark Seister was the guy leading the way at 210 pounds, number, six, number 74. Going to bring it out, 30-yard line just across the 30, as you can see on your Jones Intercable uh, Sports report here tonight as we're right here at Memorial Field. Nice night it is. Going to break here a little confusion on this play, it looks like. Guy's going to have to hustle up to the line of scrimmage. And at third and five, Gomez is relatively weak passing. But if he does throw, it would be probably to the right side where he's got two uh, wide receivers and Tepper and Kirkland. So let's find out after we set that up. He'll instead run it down. And it looks like it's going to be the halfback option to the right side. Corey throws it out of bounds. So they did go right Corey with the Austin toss, but Corey gave back. it the old heave-ho. It uh, was brought down by, I think, uh, one of the Larkin yeah, secondary well, units on that far side, or perhaps some of the Larkin uh, Royals in the very atypical five. situation being on the far side of the field here as a visitor. As you said, the pass intended for Kirkland over on that far side, but he was pretty well covered. He was double teamed over on that far side. Going to boot it away, and doing John the honors will be John Ramonde. We saw John a couple of weeks ago boot one about 40 yards on a very uh, wet night, cold night. So let's see if John can do it again. He's a two-way player out there. Nice kick once again for Ramondi, and it's going to be brought down here by Tread up at the 40. He runs to the far side and is brought down and actually lost a couple Jeremy, of yards. Jeremy Tread up, who scored a couple of touchdowns uh, last week, got that. He's a good-looking, uh, versatile performer as well, running back, also a defender at the linebacker spot. And the Larkin Royals are going to get a chance for their first, first offensive Royals position here. Well, they come 30, out with Damon McDaniel at quarterback, the two running backs, Matt Heiser and Myron Thomas. Thomas, 91 carries, 486 yards. And as they come up to the line, we'll give you the offensive line in a minute. McDaniel, 5'10", 155, junior. Kind of like a young Randall Cunningham, able to run with the football, can pass it as well. He's thrown double the times that Gomez had. It's going to be the option this way for McDaniel. Going to heave it downfield with that good arm, but he misread connections on Myron's Thomas. Myron's was going to scoot up the field on the near side. I think McDaniel Damon thought McDaniel's he might pass. head back towards the middle of the field. And Myron says, I was open, but you didn't <laughs> get it to me. And Myron's running a post pattern, and uh, obviously the, the pass well underthrown on that, so it'll be a second down 10 situation for Larkin. It is from their own 37. This contest normally was the final game of the year, but this crosstown rivalry this year with the Upstate 8 schedule changes now is this week of the season, the seventh week of the campaign and not the ninth. So with second and 10 it is. Here's going to be the handoff uh, down low it is and going to the left side, a couple of yards, maybe three yards Myers it is on the far side. Thomas the ball Myron's here. Thomas over there. He got lost in a huddle of folks as well. Nice uh, work that time Thomas by the Elgin Maroons. Trying to catch some of the tacklers. Right 65, the Andy Graff among the, uh, among the tacklers out there. Looks like Thomas gained about three yards, though, so it'll be a third down, seven yards to go. Graff, a senior, six foot, 165 pounds. Another passing situation here with 9-10 remaining here in the first quarter at Memorial Field. No score. Let's see how the Larkin Royals will play it again. They've had some uh, good offensive shows in recent weeks, and they are capable of that toss, and they might just come this way, it looks like, as they set up uh, the wide receiver out on top. And over center, it's going to be McDaniel. Shouts out the cadence. He's going to drop back and throw it this near side. And it's going to be caught. And Myron's Thomas is uh, taking it across midfield for a first down. Damon nice McDaniel grasp passed. by Myron's. Then a nice tackle Thomas by that Maroon. That, Thomas, probably who was that? That was big down. number 74, was it not? I believe so, but That's it's a nice gain of about nine yards on the play, which gives... The Larkin Boy, Royals first it, down. It nice stop. first down by Thomas. Thomas. Myron's Thomas, as you know, is a fine athlete. There's no question about that. Myron's uh, scored Take a touchdown in the, uh, in the game last week in the rain and is a very outstanding athlete. And again, coming off of back-to-back -back 100 yards on the ground and also capable of that toss as well. So that's the first first down of the game. Hand off to Thomas. Goes right up the center of things. Myron's He'll pick Thomas up about four, carrier. maybe near five. Tackle made on the play by number 78, Brandon Johnson, 5'11". 235. He's on one the of play. the multi-captains for Coach Stevens is Mr. Johnson. He's a huge guy. Just call him Moose. I was standing next to him, <laughs> standing next to him last week, uh, Paul, and uh, I play. was lost second in the shade, I think. So it's going to be second and four. They give him a long six on that, short six, if you want to look at it that way. Another running uh, situation for the Larkin Royals here from the 44 of the Maroons. Thomas will go right side this time. Not as much Myers, real estate, Thomas, but he'll pick up three, get close to that first down. David Rapp, if on. David Rapp. Our wrapped him up, AP. Paul. Yes, wrapped him up. So it's going to be third. They'll no call it two uh, from the 41. And they're going to get a play in here from Coach Krieger on the far side. Well, they're just going over Ed Nicolon, the right guard, and also Kevin Lester, the right tackle for Larkin. 
That seems to be the running place for Thomas right now, the running room. Those guys are just blowing Elgin right off the offensive line. James Johnson brings the play in from the sideline and Coach Krieger, and it's third and two. Here is going to be a mishandling of the football there on the snap, and he's not going to get that first down. Larkin does retain the football, the ball but he's game. not going to get McDaniel uh, disconnected there, fell forward, did pick up a little bit of yards. It's going to be fourth okay. and short. short we would think Coach Krieger would go for it fourth at this point, although yard. they do have an excellent field goal kicker, but still out of the range at this point, Paul. Well, you just saw Myron's Thomas, number 29, just pushing McDaniel, try to get that first down, and it's going to be fourth and about a yard to go here. Jeremy Treadup comes in. On the near side, it's James Johnson in the wide receiving position. It's Heiser and Myron's Thomas. High formation backfield. Myron's, oh, and they lose it again. McDaniel actually goes down. They could technically say he was down at that point. Loose McDaniel just Royal mishandled the snap. Actually, I thought he fell to his knee, which he should have been down. They might have been saying McDaniel he was bobbling the football. He tried to veer left mm -hmm. and got brought down for McDaniel a huge loss. The Elgin Maroons right. have taken over. And I runners. guess the referee just figured they did not that he did not retain possession, trying to gain possession. Once he finally did that, he was going backwards, and it winds up to be a loss of first seven. And Maroons It'll be a first own. and ten for the Elgin Maroons 40, at the 44-yard line. line. At the own 44, Gomez brings him up, looks left, looks right. Over center he is. See if the Maroons can come away with their first first down of the night. Gomez is going to drop back. Hand it off to Corey Hodges. We see the flags flying. Probably going to be one against the Maroons ball. ball. A we'll look at on what the, the referee has Cor to say. Corey went wide on that time. Again, Corey uh, is seeing his first offensive action in this spell. It's going to be against the, the Maroons. Holding. holding it is. That'll take the uh, air out of the balloon a little bit after they had the momentum coming their way after stopping the Larkin Royals on the Royals' first offensive possession. Again, the Royals are a solid favorite. In tonight's Rules game, the Dunkel ratings would have what, a separation of 12 points? About 12 points, yeah. 56-44. Isn't it amazing in the modern day, every, everything is rated. Why, in our house, <laughs> high school days, I don't think we had radio uh, yet. <laughs> so, well, nothing was known. Now we have the Dunkel ratings for the high school teams. That is incredible, to say the least. <laughs> going to be first and 20 coming away now. As the ball is going to be on about the 34-yard uh, line. Gomez over center. Almost disappears as he bends the knees. He'll drop back. And he's going to toss it right side. As Gomez has got a reception. Let's see. It's Gomez brought down pass. by nice catch that time by uh, Brian, Brian Tepper. Tepper. Brian Tepper, nice reception. 5'11", 145 junior. Just a little slat in pattern there that time. Tepper from the right side towards the mid portion of the field. The Picked play. up, what, Second about 14 yards in that with ball. Looks, yeah, about, well, no, more than that, Jeff. He's got about a second down and five, so call it about 15 yards. From their own 48, it is. And Corey Hodges is coming to the sidelines now. That means Demetrius Roberts will be in there. But you're right, an excellent slant pattern over the middle. Almost impossible to defend if you're a defensive back. Becker and Roberts in there also on the wide side. It's going to be Matt Kirkland uh, with the receiving spot. Second and five, really a running situation here for Coach Stevens and the troops. And as I say that, it's going to be Gomez with the option. It's wide open. He's going to get across midfield and bounce to about the 48 Gomez before he stopped pronto Keep. by one of the Royals. Is that Myron's Thomas with the far tackle over there? Looking over, no, that's number 18 over on that far side. Mark Flores, 5'8", 145-pound junior. So they don't give as much yardage as I, as I thought he got. Let's see where they mark this now. Because with that second and five, it seems like he went a lot further. And now it's going to be just across midfield. And they've got it third and third four on the scoreboard. Four. So we didn't pick up all that much of that. That was a very long two yards there, Yeah, it seemed like. So here's another key situation. Corey Hodges is back in there. We've got 4.42 remaining in the first quarter. No score here at Memorial Field. Here's truly Jeff Myers and Paul Lepic here with you at Jones and her cable. Nice that you're aboard here for this upstate eight football action. Big cross-town rivalry. Here's a big play. Gomez is going to drop back, hand it off to Corey. Corey dodging on the right side, not going to do it, but it falls short. Corey falls ahead maybe for a yard. Just didn't have the opening that time, Paul. Tried to go over right guard and right tackle. They're going to boot it away here, and Ramon Day will do the honors for Maroon. Good play by Jermaine Sharp, number 30, who played off his tackle and just stayed with Hodges to bring him down, as you said, for no gain. So, as you said, fourth down situation coming up for so, Elgin. Big John, 6'2", 205, senior. There's a nice story in the paper on John, as we talked about now last week. He's a... Uh, Tough kid out there, does a nice job for the Maroons. Ramonde is going to punt it away. It's nice uh, kick, and it's credit up the side to let go. As I looked down, I thought Jeremy was going to catch Monday, He said, no, I don't want that. Let it go, and it bounces all the way to the end zone for a touchback, and it will come out to the 20-yard line. Well, Paul, as uh, we see right off the bat, uh, if you're the Maroons, you got to be pleased that the defense yard. stopped no the hard-charging Royals in that first offensive possession. 
Well, I tell you, Elgin has played them tough, uh, has had a tough schedule. They got blown out twice, once against Wheaton Warrenville, Warrenville South and the other one time against Obonzi Valley. Other than that, they've had pretty close games all the way through, and uh, they're a tough ball club, even though the record may not reflect that. Daniel brings him up, sets up over the center one more time. 3.47 remaining in this quarter. Going to hand it off. First man through. That's going to be uh, Big Matt Heiser. He might break it. Heiser is going to be at the 45. Midfield, 45. He's brought down about the 42-yard line. Marker on the play. Oh, there's a penalty flag, though. Matt Eagle Heiser Eye Paul saw a penalty flag, so it's going to be against the Royals. Heiser just exploded there in the mid-portion of the field. Again, Mark Heiser's right a lot like Becker. You tend to lose number. a little guy when Marker there's a bunch of guys around you. 5'8", 175 for Heiser. The Heiser family is a very well-known athletic family at Larkin High School. I know Heiser's brother would have played baseball just a few years back. But they're bringing it back. It's going to be a fraction against the Larkin Royals. So, as he used to say, if you're keeping score at home, take those yards away from Matt Heiser. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if anybody ever did that. Five-yard penalty. Five-yard penalty it is. It's going to be from their own 15. Sets up a uh, first and 15 with 336 remaining here. In the first stanza, first still no score. At the Royal 15. Royals look a little bit out of uh, sync with the road uniforms here at Memorial Field for one thing. And here is going to be uh, Thomas in motion now. Thomas is going to get the handoff. He's going to come this way, not get much yardage. Bounces off a couple of men, does a nice job with that, but gets that only to the 17 for a two-yard pickup. A host of Maroons brought him down. <laughs> Primarily Mark number Thomas. 78, Ball Moose carrier. Brandon Johnson Brandon here, 5'11", 235 giving Fridge a run for his money uh, buying wise now, isn't he? You think Fridge is going to last a couple more weeks with the Bears? I don't know. We'll see what happens. Get to that eighth week of the year. You have to pay for a whole year. So as we talk, Fridge is on the bubble as you talk. So here we go. This is uh, second and 13 from their own 17 for the Larkin Royals. Thomas in motion once again. Takes the pitch back, and it's going to be the handoff down the middle of things. Goes to uh, Jeremy Treadup, who scored Jeremy a couple of Treadup touchdowns. In last Going week's trap. game for Larkin, Jeremy's Tackle across the 20 to about Mike the 23. Kiel. Tackle made by number 63, Mike Kyle for Elgin. So here is another passing situation here, but a delicate one, Paul, at third and 11, so close to your own end zone. This could be difficult. Let's see how they play that as the, uh, it will be third on their own 22, on the about third and eight, as it turns out now, as the scoreboard catches up with 210 remaining here in the initial stanza. Once again, Thomas in motion. It's going to be go, uh, I should say McDaniel running this way, passing. It's going to be Thomas. Oh, what a catch. sensational catch. Thomas is going to go all the way. Off the fingertips and went of one of the Elgin Maroons. Thomas with the catch. He's got pay dirt in six points. Sensational play. What? It is going to go 77 yards. The pass from McDaniel to Myron's Thomas. And that happens at the 155 mark, as you said, 77-yard pass from McDaniel to Thomas. To uh, the key here, though, Thomas is Deion Johnson, number 20, touchdown. who is covering Thomas on that end and uh, on this side, and tipped the ball, and it went right into Thomas's hands for that 77-yard catch, and Deion Johnson over on this near side still can't believe it. <laughs> Myritz had good concentration on that because he had to kind of change stride to catch the football. Then after he got that, Deion was falling to the turf. It was all pay dirt for Myritz. Kick is going to be good by Johnson. And we are going to have Jeremy uh, an extra point, making it 7-0 in the Larkin Royals Johnson. with the advantage extra with 155 remaining here in the, the first the quarter. That's what the Maroons the were trying to avoid Royals. there, Paul. Seven. They had really stopped the Larkin Royals, had them in a tough third and long situation in their own territory, the Royals were. Then one of those freak situations where Dion can't make the interception and knock it down. The credit of Myritz Thomas, he had the concentration, following it into his hands, and then that great foot speed took him away. Well, I tell you, Myron had a couple of steps on Deion Johnson, but Deion Johnson did get a hand on it. Unfortunately, instead of batting the ball down for an incomplete pass, he tipped it, just inadvertently tipped it in the air, and Thomas, able to guide, his, guide himself underneath it, made the catch, and he's off to the races. Johnson is going to uh, is going to kick Ryan off Johnson here once again, for the Royals, and it's 155 Robert remaining here in the first quarter. As we said, here's Johnson the kick. It's a line shot that's hit uh, one of the upmen in the chest. There, ball bounces around a little bit. Let's see if the Maroons come away with it. Well, that was a line shot, like a line Ryan drive Johnson. off the bat of Frank Thomas when the White Sox were playing baseball, Covered and it hit one of the upmen. And uh, the Maroons are going to have good field position Where's here at about their own 33-yard line. The poor upman is number 20, Deion Johnson, who gets uh, that ball. <laughs> Johnson's body parts are on display here tonight, I think, Paul. I tell you. His fingertips, now the chest 
taking the one-two punch there. Some of the fans settle into their seats. I see a bobbing head or two there. And we appreciate all our great crew out here from Jones Inter Cable Sports on this night. Cameraman Chad enjoying a birthday tonight, so we say happy birthday to him. Here's Matt in motion in for the Maroons. And they've got 125 remaining here in the corner. Gomez, the handoff to the first man through. And that Corey Hodges, I believe, or is that Dion? Gomez. Dion. That's Dion. And the option keep. Let's see. I gotta check the end. Is Dion Johnson? By gosh, he's everywhere. Flag on the play. And another flag. Let's that'll probably bring it back. Dion Johnson, Johnson also is the shot. kicker tonight for the Elgin Maroons. Is the play. regular kicker. Oh, Chet Mustard has bad grades this It'll week, if you will, and he's not eligible tonight. So Dion will be the man uh, with the toe. It's going to be a holding call against Elgin. He'll back him up 10 yards. So again, you're facing a first down and 15 because it goes from the point of the infraction. First and 15. First Matt Becker's going to check in along with Tim Martin. Becker three. running back. Martin to tight end. Coming out is Dion and also uh, coming to the sidelines for a moment will be uh, number 12, Ryan Tepper. That will be for the Maroons. Here we go. With the drums are pounding, it's going to be first and 15 from their own 30-yard line for the Maroons with less than one minute remaining here in the first quarter. And off down the middle, That's nowhere to go. See who the ball carrier was. Uh, Matt Becker, I believe, the pint size guy, and it was. He didn't Ryan get much Bell on that one, just fell ahead for a couple of yards. Sets up a third and second, oh, and second and ten, second and ten situation would be with penalty 30, from their own 34 yard line. Yeah, Becker went over right tackle and he only got about four yards because they're going to give him four on that, so it'll be second down ten. Short of an incomplete pass, this will be our final play of the first quarter. Obez over center. Gets the snap from Ross, he'll drop back. He's still got the football, tosses it this way. There's the incomplete pass and the clock stops. It was a pass that probably should have been handled that time by big John Ramonde. He had that, would have had substantial gain and a first down, but John, I believe, Paul, began to run a little bit before he secured the football. Yeah, that's his first incomplete pass tonight. He has two, uh, Gomez has two runs. First incomplete pass of the evening. Exit 14 seconds remaining. Seven nothing, Larkin on top, a big 77 yard uh, pass 30, reception and jaunt by Myron Thomas he has been the scoring here that took place at the 155 juncture of the first quarter. And that's where we stand right now. So third and 10, Maroons will bring it up. Let's see if they run or pass to the right side this time. Although in the slot, they do have Corey Hodges right now, which we don't see that all as much. So if he's gonna throw, he's gonna throw left. Well. If he can get away with it, he's gonna throw instead to Corey who goes across the field Steve and Gomez. tries to get the pass, pass but it was behind him and an incomplete pass. Incomplete. Corey said Fourth you didn't lead me too well on that one, Steve. Well, I tell you though, number 51 for Larkin, and I'm trying to catch the name Dave Vitel, the uh, defensive lineman, six foot 205, coming right up the middle. Luckily, somebody from the Maroons picked him up, but he put a lot of pressure on Gomez. Gomez had to get rid of that ball in a hurry. Ramondi with punt number three on the first quarter here. Gets a high snap. He'll get the boot away. Again, a nice kick for him, and Trenup's going to stay away from it. No, instead, Myron Thomas is out taking that ball to the ground as he saw the maroon in his eye as he captured that football. Very dangerous. There's really no reason for Myron's to do that. And so the Larkin Royals will have it at their own. 29 yard line and with that that punt took up the final seconds of the first quarter so we stand at the end of one quarter it is larkin seven elgin nothing we take a timeout. this is william shatner guide dogs give blind people the freedom to go wherever they want and the law permits them everywhere that's open to the public to learn more call the guide dog foundation for the blind toll free 1-800-548-4337 that's 1-800-548-4337 it's never too soon to save for college. With U.S. Savings Bonds, you'll double your money at maturity. Get U.S. Savings Bonds for education, at work, or your bank. They grow almost as fast as kids do. U.S. Savings Bonds. Back for second quarter action right here on Jones and Cable. High school football action coming your way. We appreciate you being aboard here on this night. And uh, we'll have a chance to see the Larkin Royals with the football. They've got the lead, 7 to nothing again. If you joined us late, Myron Thomas with a 77-yard reception and run was the first touchdown. The extra point was good. We'll have Paul Lepping take a look at some of those stats coming away in just a couple of seconds. With it, snap from center. There's a handoff going right side over right guard. Tackle, not really too much real estate there. 
for the Royals, brought down nicely by the left side of the line by the Maroons. We'll check a number or two. And uh, I guess Myron's had to carry it. It looks like Myron's, yeah. Well, he gets lost in the shuffle uh, because <laughs> Myron's is pint size as far as height, 5'9". And as Matt we said, Heiser Matt Heiser there. is only 5'8". So with those guys from the running the back spot, defense. seems like some of those the big burly linemen can kind of make 31. them disappear, to say the least. Here it is, second and seven now from their own 31 for the Larkin Royals. And Larkin three and three on the campaign. Myron's is going to run right side. Yeah, pick up Thomas about three or four game. yards. He'll be short of the first down, Will Thomas. Thomas had, I think, 104 yards in the victory last week. And again, he's coming off back-to-back -back successful games. They had an incredible game up against the Cal with the Johnny Barbs Mondi are strongly. And others on the <laughs> yeah. A 50 to three final. The Barbs are, <laughs> as we talk within this game, going into their 0-6 conference. Well, the Barbs are suffering from a teacher the start of the season. Yeah. So that threw them off a little bit. That combination can be deadly, to say the least. We know strikes. Uh, yes, we do. Uh, when we talk Elgin uh, <laughs> uh, school system over the years, I guess. But We hold our breath every time a football season comes. <laughs> no chance of that this year. Third and five it is. We have some fun here in the booth. There's going to be the drop by McDaniel. He throws this way. Almost a chance for him. We see a flag fly in the middle of the field, but that was almost a fingertip grab Myron once again Thomas. after a tip drill, if you might, from Myron Thomas. <laughs> Deion Johnson's walking around saying, what do these guys want with me? <laughs> They're picking on my side all the time. They really are. Dion's not uh, Neon Dion here so far. No. He's although, being showcased, though. Although David Rapp, number 23, helped out on this near side, but still Johnson almost got that ball. It's going to be a holding call, I believe, against the Maroons. Ooh, interesting. And he's going to walk off the long uh, yardage here. It's going to be first down for the Larkin Royals. So the second big break of the game goes Larkin Royals' way as well. I'm not sure what that was actually called on that. Didn't look like it was on the wide receiver, though. I, you know, on the on the pass play itself, it must have been in the line or something to that effect. At All right, Royal so that's what we have. At their own 44, they do have a uh, new set of downs, first and 10 for the Larkin Royals, with 10.39 remaining here in the second quarter. Referee getting ready there. He's got to get out of the melee and says, let me get out of here, fellas. I don't have any pads. <laughs> and now we're ready to go. As the Royals are ready to go, there's a handoff to Myron Thomas going right side again, bounces off a couple of Maroons, finally brought down Myron by Seister Thomas and a couple of the guys. There. Myron's picks up a substantial game. Seems like his average is about 5.3 or 4. That's what he seems like he picked up on that one. Five and a cloud of dust. And Jeff Hamiel, number 79, and on the stop for, for, the, uh, for the Maroons. Looking at the statistics so far, he's 10, 16, 24, about eight carries for 24 yards. It's about a, almost a four yard per average. Yeah, not too bad. Not, not usually what he's up to, but again, Myron's bouncing again. Actually changed direction almost Myron's that time. Bounced off a couple there. of Maroons. He's going to be short of the uh, first down marker here. She's probably going to end up with about a third and Tackle two. Tackle made by Brandon Johnson. Johnson. Like by Seister, number 74. Mark the uh, drum and bugle corps lodged right in my headset here, I think, uh, Paul. <laughs> We've got the uh, fine the Elgin band really not too far third away from us here as we talk with one. you down in the, the Maroons, near the end of the field, I guess, on press row. Well, Jeff, I always said you had to beat. I guess so. <laughs> Doc Severson starts up another yeah. band. I think I'll volunteer yeah. after this. Third and two it is. Oh, their own 47-yard line for the Royals. And here's going to be McDaniel. Looks like it's going to be uh, Red Doggy there, if you mind, in the old terminology by the Larkin, uh, by the Elgin Maroons, so we should say. Either way, Larkin read it well, but that play didn't develop too much, and uh, it's going to be short as they just went ahead for about a yard. It's going to be fourth and short in this situation. Tackle made by Thomas Mark again. And but you're right, it's a fourth and call it a yard. He only gained about a yard on that play. And, and here's an interesting situation. They uh, are going to have uh, tread up come in. It's fourth and short, although you don't want to miss the first down and give, once again, that momentum factor to the Elgin Maroons. It looks like they're going to go for it. But what do we got here? Did I see a flag of flying? Mm, not yet, no. Okay, I think Tommy's called a timeout. <clears throat> I think they've called a timeout, so... I thought they were going to measure is what they finally decide. About 35 seconds later, we decide, why don't we measure since we have that uh, dial it down on the sidelines, <laughs> I guess. So it's still going to be short. We can see that from here. And we've got good seats up here at Press Row, but we're not exactly. You can see that on your television set at home. Just a tad short. So again, uh, still a somewhat difficult decision if anything would happen here. You'd give the Maroons the football at or about midfield. I say it's going to Thomas. I would, your bread and butter. I would think you've got a pretty fair assessment with that. I think so. <laughs> Gonna come out of the eye with uh, Heiser, the man up, up close, and then Thomas in the, the back. So it's probably gonna be with Heiser blocking, and that's how it goes. Myron's will go right side. Ooh. Not really a Myron's whole bunch of room Thomas there, but he's gonna wedge his way across 
that 45 and 44 yard line to get that first down. But that uh, he didn't make it by much that time. And we see Matt Seister and a couple of the guys coming off the uh, pile there. He's had a nice game, Matt has. Matt's a junior, 6'4", 210 for the Elgin Maroons. Gave him about four yards on the play. Did they? Well, I didn't see anywhere near that. No. Boy, that's incredible. Scored it through. 42 yard line, it becomes first and 10. The Royals on the march uh, again. They have the lead seven to nothing. It was a quick strike in the first quarter. That got them their first touchdown. There's going to be the handoff bounce around. Is that the Heiser down low? Yes, it is. Heiser goes left side. Did he lose the football? Perhaps not. Yeah. Uh, Quan yeah. of dirt just flung away from the pile. Heiser's going to pick up about four. Demetrius Roberts and David Rapp. Heiser ball carrier stopped by the right side of the maroon defense. So the entire right side of the uh, defense gets a lot of defaulted here from our good PA man here. On maroon the field. Memorial Field, we should say, land in the home of the Maroons. Seven yard with line. Sabres and Larkin Royals, of course, is the most versatile field I know. <laughs> it really is. Talk about the old tear. days when Cubs had Wrigley Field and the Bears had it. I mean, yeah. everybody's home base right here. Yeah. There is going to be Trent up coming around, and he's going nowhere. Going to lose substantial yardage. Heiser they fake the, the, the wide toss, if you will, to the left, and Trent up came around from the near side. He couldn't go Brent anywhere in that Johnson slow developing and play and was Ramonzi. brought down. Brandon Johnson followed along on the play as Trent up went on the reverse. Johnson followed along and brought him Lost down for a stop. Jeremy scored uh, touchdowns the last week of two and 19 30, yards. That was nine. late in the going in the fourth quarter. He doesn't really get all that uh, many carries room. in a game, but seems like he's always 42. Johnny on the spot when he does. So here we go, third and nine now from the 42-yard line by the Lycan Royals. And they bring it up here as they're in uh, maroon territory. Let's see if passing situation it is. Let's see if Paul, can you call it? Maybe not. Uh, He's, he's going to do the same play almost no, he's instead. <laughs> he's going to drop back and toss it right oh. through the hands of uh, Jermaine Sharp, it looked like, on the far side. Was it not? Is that no, Sharp? Number 80 over on that far Myra's. side is Amara. No, is that Pengi Yangi? Is that yes. 80 over there? I thought it was a 30. Pengi Yangi couldn't get it. Yeah. Well, Pengi Yangi wasn't even anywhere Fourth, close. He was about nine. five yards away from that ball. He threw that's it right at the sideline. Pengi Yangi first made the turn. So it winds up being a fourth down. They, they did have triple coverage on that far side, though, anyways. Going to boot it away are the Larkin Royals now in the fourth and nine. So a nice defensive stop that time by Coach Stevens and the troops. First punt of the night by the Royals, and this nice high kick is going to be brought down, taken by Becker. Didn't call for the fair catch. He got it at about the 14 and scampered up to about the 19 or 20-yard line. Nice, Matt good, aggressive Becker catch that time, Matt and lots Romero's of... Uh, uh, problems with as far as uh, all kinds of traffic. Becker was able to do it. Go forward. That's always scary in a crowd like that, isn't it, Paul? Yes, it is. 28-yard kick for Ryan Johnson. It's the first Larkin punt of the night, and it comes at 6:43 at remaining to go in the first half. Mr. Ramonde and the Elgin Maroons have booted it away on three occasions. 6:43, as you mentioned, remains second stanza. It's seven nothing. We've seen the return of Corey Hodges here tonight, but right now Dion Johnson and Matt Becker would be the backfield tandem for the Maroons. Brian Tepper out there coming off the field is Matt Kirkland. They rotated wide receiver. So right now, well, and they've switched again. That's Dion uh, Corey Hodges out there now. It's a 21 on the far side. Becker on the near side as they line up in the backfield. And the pitch will go to the far side to Corey. Corey tries to get around. And Corey he picked Hodges up a few the yards there. Carry. Thought he might get uh, the advantage of a face guard call, but it wasn't as nobody grasped the face mask. And Corey picked up, what, five before he went out of bounds. Just simply ran out of territory. Yeah, Myron's Johnson, in on, or Myron's Thomas, rather, in on the stop on the far side, just grabbed his jersey and just flung him out of bounds. I want to call him Myron's Johnson, too. I, I, know. I know. It I know. Like, Thomas. seems like it seven goes seven all the way. Myron's Thomas. Yes. I think I have called him Johnson a lot. Myron's, we know. We know Myron's is a fine talent. So it's going to be second and seven, their own 23-yard line for the Maroons. Maroons having trouble putting a lot of points on the scoreboard in recent weeks, as you know. Becker in motion, going far side. It's going to be tossed to Corey Hodges, almost the same play. Corey gets across the sideline. He'll get a first down, go out of bounds. Nice Corey run Hodges that time by Corey. Gets pitch. across the 30 to about Hodges the 33-yard line. Forced out of bounds on that far side by number 82, Jacob Orgel. Hodges out of bounds. 155 pound junior. Third and a fourth. He didn't get, he didn't get the first down. He forced him out of bounds just shy of the 30. Wow, he went a lot further along the sideline, but did step the big toe out of bounds. So it's third and one. A big play here. Deion Johnson comes out now for Coach Stevens. Big play for the Maroons. They like to hang on to that football for a while. March downfield quite a bit. 
As we said at the top of the program, the game plan would be to have a nice, long, substantial drive. So let's see how it goes. One would think you could give it to Becker and a little... 5-4 running back who's picked up lots of yardage this year could come away with it. Let's see and send it to quarterback Gomez Sneak. Quarterback and Steve Sneak Gomez says, I'll do it myself. He got it too. Tackle That's made by number 30, Jermaine line. Sharp. And it'll be a first down. Gomez is 5'7", 160 pounder. Pretty durable quarterback he is. So there's a first down, just like that. And with 5.50 remaining. This is, of course, the uh, City Series, if you will, which is all knotted up. 15 wins, 15 losses, dating back to 1963 when the first varsity game between the two teams was played. Last two years have been won by the Maroons, 34 to 20 a year ago, 14 to 8 last year. So Larkin looking for a little revenge on this particular one, also trying to take the advantage in the series, knotted up at 15 and 15. Couldn't be tighter. It's going to be Corey Hodges and that play to the far side once again for Corey. Corey tries to spin around. He'll pick up a couple of yards, Corey but not much Hodges more than that. Okay. Simply runs out of territory there. Larkin's uh, pursuit is real good. They're forcing that to be strung out a little bit. Corey can't turn upfield very quickly, and henceforth, he's out of bounds. Todd Garrison, number 17 to 5'9", junior defensive lineman in on the stop on the far side, but you're right. Gained a couple of yards. Get They're trying to run the over line. that left side with Seven Matt Seister at 210. And Tim Martin at 185. When Gomez got the uh, quarterback keeper, he went right over Robert Ross, the center, at 195. So there's a lot of moose, uh, a lot of big beef up front for the Elgin offensive line. 4-4-4 four, four, four remain here in the second quarter. This is second and eight now from their own 33-yard line. You can see the soccer lines on the field. There was a soccer game here last night, which is won by Elgin 3-1. to one. There's going to be the toss back by Corey Hodges. Hodges was going to leap over oh. a man, falls ahead. He looked like Hodges Super Dave that there. time. He <laughs> falls into about the 40. Uh, uh, you're not supposed to be able to leap over a man in the open field. Technically, he wasn't there, but he was bounding, for heaven's sakes. Falls forward, and he's going to be uh, just a little shy of the There's first down, but you got to like that uh, grit That's and determination ball. Well, Jacob Orgel, number 82, again out on that far side, looked up, and he saw Hodges just leap right over him <laughs> for about five yards, and uh, almost, uh, almost the first down. He's about one yard short. Corey had been two more feet in the air, he would have had to have a parachute. Yeah. <laughs> Regulations would have demanded it. <laughs> it's going to be a third and two for the Maroons, and with it up in the center, it's going to be the first down Becker done nicely by Becker. Becker. Becker with a quick handoff Becker exploded down, yeah. across the 40, across the 45, to his own 47-yard line, and a first down by the Maroons. It's a gain of seven on the play, and Becker with a little misdirection play went over the right side. Brandon Johnson, Don Miller leading the, uh, leading the attack. But a good run for Becker and a first down, as you said, for the Maroons. We're down to 3.33 remaining here in the first half. 7-0 is the count. Larkin on top in this crosstown right, rivalry, the Town Jug up. Series game, if you might. Here's Julie Jeff Myers along with Paul Lepic. This is oh, going to be handed off to Corey. Right. Corey brought down. Boy, Corey who was that that brought him down there quickly? Uh, the let's see. He's still getting up here. Number, coming. come on, turn this way, please. Looks, I would think, number 20, 29, Myron Myron Thomas. Thomas comes away with that, so the couple of similar athletes Lost bounce off each Second other that time. Corey to Myron Thomas, and he loses a couple of yards in that one. So Corey's uh, taking a, a licking out there from time to time, and again, he's playing with that knee that has bothered him. Corey, the sensational three-sport star, he's a great guard in basketball, wonderful track man he is, and now the fine football player that he is. Larry Nemers told me that Corey's good enough to play at a major school, perhaps even a defensive back. He's got that much talent to play at a big school as far as football is concerned. Talented athlete. On the near side, here comes Corey. Corey around some blockers. He's going to dipsy do. He's going to lose the football as well. It's picked up by Salinas Corey, for Larkin the Royals. There's a turnover by Corey. Corey faked himself away from the pigskin that toss. <laughs> nice run, but he lost the football. <laughs> First and ten. They're going to spot it at own, about the 42-yard 40, line. Yard line. So credit him with about eight or nine yards on that run before he lost it. He lost it with 2.23 remaining, and Larkin will come away with it. Guard scoop that up for the Larkin Royals. 2.15 remain here in that first half, and they're going to break huddle. Let's see how they play this now from their own 42-yard line. They could pretty much run out the clock by getting one first down for sure. Let's see if they want to put it in the air at all. Dropping back is McDaniel. Looking right, he's going to give it uh, the old toss, and only Deion Johnson over the Elgin Maroons is anywhere in the Daniel area. McDaniel he just passed. heaved that downfield, and a Daniel Hail Mary it was. James Johnson was the intended receiver on that far side, number 11, but you're right. The only guy nearby was good old number 20, Deion Johnson. 
says, hey, guys, I'm on this side, and guess what? McDaniel threw it that way. Yeah. <laughs> Deion's been the most talked about man here in the first half, he along with Myron. <laughs> so less than two minutes remain, so they pretty much have set the stage that they want to play uh, and see if they can come away with the score here. Pengiengi trots off the field on the far side, so they're bringing in a different tight end configuration here. See if they throw uh, to the near side, perhaps. And a little confusion here is coming back. It's going to be Trenum. Jeremy says, here's the play. McDaniel's got it. He's going to line up once again, as you can see right there, your television set. There's a backdrop. Uh, it's oh going to be a pass. It is a pass. He still has the football. Almost faked out our cameraman there. And then on the far side, is going to be run out of bounds. Is quarterback McDaniel. Wonderful Damon ball handling McDaniel. that time by Damon McDaniel. But... He wasn't able to find anybody open if indeed it was going to be the quarterback bouncing to the John far Raimondi. side or whether he's going to drop back to throw. Either way, nothing Deion developed. Johnson. Well, he handed off to number 23, Brandon Carter. And, yeah, and our cameraman just followed that. And, and Carter got licked right at the offensive line. But he rolled out, and McDaniel ran for about five to six yards before he was forced out of bounds by number 21, Corey Hodges, on the far side. So that sets it up here. Third and four now with 120 remaining. And the clock moving here in the first half. Larkin on top, 7 to nothing. There's the handoff, and first down and more. As it looks like it's going to be Heiser. Yes, it's a little Matt Heiser. The junior at 5'8", 175, the quick hitter, a lot like Matt Becker for the Matt other Heiser team. The ball, Exploded carrier. across the uh, first down yardage, and then some all the way into maroon territory to the 34-yard line. Now Johnson the clock becomes a Roberts. factor here with 105 remaining the first down yardage in the first half. Absolutely right. Wide open field line. for Heiser as he went over the right side, cut back left, and he uh, got about 15, 16 yards on that play for the first down. See so yeah, how we play it. Jeremy trade up on the far side of the slot. Jeremy's a good receiver. Let's see if it's going to be a, a toss to the right side for McDaniel. McDaniel looks left, throws down the center of the field, and it's going to be over mm. the head of Deion Johnson for one. Damon McDaniel's <laughs> uh, yeah, for the way. other. Amara Pengiengi was there. Deion Johnson uh, was around the ball, as yes. you might expect. Ten and it was four. incomplete as the <laughs> band begins to Ten head uh, towards the field. Art, <laughs> Art Salinas, the other wide receiver on that, near si on that far side, was one of the intended receivers but it, it was kind of cute, Jeff, when you said the intended receiver was number 20, Deion Johnson, because <laughs> Johnson was right there. <laughs> it's second and 10 now at the 34, another passing situation with the time uh, winding down here in the first half. And here in man in motion is going to be tread up. Gone on the far side, it's going to be the setup with McDaniel. Flings the pass, nicely done, received on the far side. Pickup of about 10 yards. Complete. And let's see who received it on the far down. side. Is that, was that Salinas? No, no, number 11, James Johnson, received it on the far side. And Corey Hodges in on the stop. Corey stopped him. That was exactly, uh, well, more than 10 yards. About 12, well, as it turns Martin. out. Brings it up to the 22. First and 10 for the Royals. 38 seconds remain here. This would be oh so sweet for the Royals to come away with a touchdown here. Uh, before there's going to be a timeout on the field. We'll keep it right here. A touchdown here would be sweet for the Larkin Royals, to say the least, Paul. Absolutely right. As... Larkin has the 7 to nothing lead, but uh, Larkin on the move again, and if Larkin scores again, it'll be an, an, it'll be an interesting halftime huddle with uh, Dick Stevens and the Elgin Maroons, because you don't want to be down 14 points at halftime to a, to a team that has such a balanced attack with McDaniel either throwing the ball or running the ball with Myron's Thomas. No question about that, and if they stop them here, t talking about they being Elgin, except for one long play that was kind of a freak play, the long pass run by Myrids Thomas, scoring that 77-yarder, it could have been nothing-nothing. And it's exactly what Coach Stevens would hope his defense would go out there and play this well. So far, they've done that. The offense has struggled, but we expected that might be the case. So here we go. 38 seconds remain. Throwing situation once again for David McDaniel, the five junior quarterback for Coach Krieger and the Larkin Royals. After some of the secondary crew trots off the field, I think we're ready for football action right here. On Jones Intercable, we appreciate you being aboard here for exciting high school football. Man in motion, it's Thomas. There's a handoff to Heiser, right side. Heiser explodes, bounces off a couple men. He's all the way down to about the 10 yard line. Nice run by Matt, picked up 12 yeah, yards. Heiser the ball carrier. My goodness, Heiser again, right side, cuts back left. Nobody from the le from the right side of the Elgin defense able to pick him up in that secondary. And Heiser, as you said, ran all the way down to the 10 yard line. We, have, we again have a timeout on the field, charge to Larkin. Heiser's like a runaway fire plug when he gets in there. Bounces off of folks, too tough to bring down. Finally, he is stopped at the 10 yard line. Coach Stevens gonna bring out some beef right now for a defensive stand here as we're in the red zone and then some. Here's Deion Johnson coming out and Brandon Johnson's coming out. 
number 77, Chris Shore, 6'1", 320 pounds wow. into the lineup. Is that right, 320? Number 77, that's what they senior. list them as. Wow. 320. My goodness. That's how much weight we have here in Press Row. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of girth out there. We don't see all that much of Mr. Shores, but he's in there to shore up the defense, First to say the least. Royals, First and 10, 10 yard line, 10 32 yard seconds line. remain here. Let's see how the Larkin Royals will play it here. On the near side, James Johnson is one on one with Demetrius Roberts if a passing uh, play would develop in that situation. Let's see if it does. Then McDaniel's going to look right down the center of the field. It's a touchdown. touchdown. Pengi Engi, Amara Pengi Engi with a TD. Right down the middle of things here. If he didn't run James out of McDaniel's real estate at the end of the end zone, he had the TD. Nice Two. pass from McDaniel to Pengi Engi. And just like that, the Royals have put six more touchdown. on the scoreboard. And they've got the advantage 13 0. Well, I tell you, Pingy Yangi got a couple of steps on the two defenders. It was wide open, a post pattern. Daniel just dropped back, just threw it right over the middle. Pingy Yangi caught it on a fly for a touchdown. So it's going to be. Uh, Michael Stolt will attempt the extra point. It doesn't look like a good extra point kicker. There, does it? That's a good switch on it. Check that number out. The kick is going to be good. Either way, it's an extra point is good for the Larkin Royals, and they have done what they set out to do. With time waning Michael down Stoltz here in the first half, good. he would have marched downfield and Making come away the with scores. a touchdown. For the Elgin Maroons, exactly the opposite true. The they played a very good game except for one freak play and held the uh, Royals at bay. But now that long drive and the heads might be bowed a little bit as they head to the locker room for the Maroons. Boy, two big plays on that drive though. Heiser with a 16-yard run followed by a 12-yard run. Both the same way. Went right, the cut back left. And then the 10-yard pass to Pingy Yangi to finish it off, and uh, McDaniel and the Larkin Royals look awfully strong right now going into halftime. That was Michael Sulte who uh, kicked that extra point. Let's see how this will be handled here. Demetrius Roberts will be in the center of the field. Matt Becker on the near side for the Maroons. David Rapp on the far side as you look at it. And we'll get ready for this kickoff here in 28 seconds remaining in the first half. And the Larkin Royals, after a miserable start to the season, they lost to tough teams, as you know, Paul. They, they really lost all the teams that they might have had trouble beating. First part of the schedule, they knocked off Argo easily, 33 to nothing. They defeated the Cal, 50 to three. They won last week, as we talked with you, but Michael they played Stolten some uh, tough teams. The and they at one time stood at one and three. You can't lose more than three and get to the playoffs. There's the kick by Stolte again, and it's going to be taken down by Demetrius Roberts on the far side at about his own 13-yard line. He's going to run it near side. Demetrius across the 20. He's at the 25. He's going to be run out of bounds Demetrius at the 30. That's down the line marker, kickoff. and that's going to be the kickoff, but we still have 21 seconds remaining here. The Royals in the first Brandon half, so one Carter. would think that Gomez will get a chance to put it in the air a couple of, of times for the troops. Boy, Brandon Carter ran him out of bounds, and they're going to spot it at about the 30-yard line, as you said, but kick going to Roberts. Line. Roberts with that 90-yard kickoff return against West Aurora, as well as Wabonzi Valley earlier this year, so they thought, give it to Roberts now, you might get a chance to break one. But good coverage by the Larkin Royals on the wedge. So here we go, 77-yard uh, touchdown pass to Myron Thomas and a 10-yard to Amara Pengi Engi is what the score has seen so far. The extra points were good, and it's 14-0. Our crew members are saying there's going to be a Hail Mary pass here. I think is that right? about right. Well, yeah, they know. it's going to be a Hail Mary. It'll be a little bomb. They've been sitting out in the cold for about three and a half hours. They know what's going on. Yeah, but, yeah they're doing this tomahawk chop, though. They're, they're, Kirkland they're doing this on the near side. They're <laughs> last week's news, aren't they? Well, what happened there was bouncing off everybody. Gomez says, I'll just take it myself. Steve Gomez, the maroon ball carrier. <laughs> As uh, they he was going to hand it off, it looked like, or at least fake it, Gomez as shoulder pads collided. Gomez Jeremy. just bounced off of that, came near side, and fell down, as we said. Jeremy Heffling in on the stop, number 59, among and others, for Larkin. And Jeremy Paul, that's going to be the first half just like that. That Hail Mary will End have to wait for another half. time in the annals of football. Refreshment history. stands <laughs> are open at both ends of the main right. stadium. We have and got the uh, of the first half already over with. Stadium. We're going to get a chance Visitor to stands. get third quarter action. Also take a look at the halftime stats when we return. Our count, Larkin. 14, Old Elgin nothing. Taco. We take a timeout. We're back Don't after forget. these.
once again, we are here at halftime of tonight's game. Larkin Royals, Elgin Maroons. You see the pom-pom squad for Elgin. Larry Nemers told us a couple of weeks ago, one of the finest squads around. They get a chance to do a little rap song. Paul, that was your specialty, wasn't it? Yeah. I think so. I think yeah. most of the moves they're doing, you invented. Oh, absolutely. 14 nothing <laughs> is the count. Larkin with a couple of, uh, well, one long thrust, and then a long uh, drive that ended in a 10-yard toss. And the Royals uh, probably are going to pretty much dominate the numbers as we take a look at them, Paul. Well, let's take a look at the individual statistics first. For the Elgin Maroons, uh, let's go group. For, first for Larkin Royals, passing yards, as you see, four for eight for 108 yards. Rushing yards, they rushed 16 times for 65 yards as a club. The Elgin Maroons passing yards, one for three for 15 yards, that to Brian Tepper. And rushing yards, 15 carries for 44 yards. Let's go to the individual statistics. Steve Gomez has one for three for 15 yards, that to Brian Tepper. He's had four carries for two yards. Corey Hodges, the big gun on, on offense so far for the Elgin Maroons, had seven carries for 23 yards. Matt Becker being held only 14 yards on three carries. Deion Johnson, one carry for five yards. Penalties have hurt the Maroons. They've had three penalties so far for 30 yards. Uh, Raimondi, the punter, has three punts for 95 yards. It's about a 31-yard average. And Elgin has one turnover, that being a fumble uh, lost by Corey Hodges. So uh, those are the statistics for the Elgin Maroons. For the Larkin Royals, Damon McDaniel, four for eight on the passing yards for 108 yards. He personally has three carries for zero yards. Matt Heiser, three carries for 33 yards. And uh, 28 of those 33 yards came on that touchdown pass, as Jeff was saying, to Pangy Yangi in the end zone. Myron's Thomas, 10 carries for 32 yards. He's got two catches on the night for 86 yards. One of those, a 77-yard touchdown reception that at, in the first quarter. And then, of course, Amara Pangy Yangi has one catch for 10 yards, that resulting in a touchdown. Ryan Johnson with the punt. He has one punt for 28 yards on the night. Uh, in the first quarter, as Jeff was saying, at the 155 mark, uh, Damon McDaniel with a 77-yard touchdown pass to Myron's Thomas made the score 6-0, the point after attempt being good. And then at the 28-second mark in the second quarter, a 10-yard Damon McDaniel to Amara Pangi Yangi touchdown pass made the score 13-0, the point after attempt by Stulte was good. Made it 14 to nothing, and that's where we sit at halftime. And you were right, Jeff. Elgin's got to come out strong, or else Larkin will dominate this second half. No question about that, Paul. Uh, we see the fire batons out there right now for the young ladies. This uh, act should get us on the Chevy Chase show, for heaven's sakes. These ladies are tossing these uh, these fire, I don't know what to call them, batons on fire. See, now we, I taught them this. We were, uh, a couple of weeks ago, <laughs> we were here, cameraman Chad, yours truly. They couldn't get those darn things lit. We couldn't enjoy the show. They tried for about 10 minutes. Well, see, I'm here now. I guess, I guess. <laughs> You're the fire marshal, I'm the fire guy here. All right. I'm just hot stuff. I, I guess so. Uh, <laughs> It looks to be that way. Well, Larkin's hot stuff right now as they uh, try to get their third consecutive victory on their way to five alive and perhaps a, a shot in the playoffs it would be for them. The Maroons have got to just dig in once again and say, well, one kind of freak play and one long drive, sure, but if we can just get something going here and control the line of scrimmage a little bit, get Corey Hodges in the open, get Matt Becker back in the game. As you said, he hasn't been much of a factor. They can maybe come up with a score or two. Stay close, surprise the Royals. We saw a game two weeks ago against uh, Lake Park, which is a very good team, uh, Paul. The fourth quarter was completely dominated by the Maroons, and uh, they scored a couple of times. Demetrius Roberts did, and it turned out to be a 27-14 final, so it got close down the stretch. So we shall find out. You see the Maroons, uh, as you look at your uh, television set, warming up there a little bit, limbering up the muscles and the legs. Here's the Larkin Royals on the far side as they're the visitors here tonight in the town jug game. And they'll get around their coach Krieger and get ready for action. Elgin, as we told you in the first half, has won the last two of these encounters, 14-8 in 1991, and then the Maroons were winners last year, 34-20. to This series dates back to 1963 varsity-wise when the Maroons knocked off Larkin 26-13. to There's been some doozies in the series, Paul. There's been some high-scoring games. Remember the game in 81, Larkin 48, Elgin 20? You might remember the playoff game. I don't know if that's really the Town Jug series, but if we look at the playoff game of 90, which was a sensational mm -hmm. game, the 21-20 thriller, in which yes. Coach Stevens went for the two-point conversion. Yes. That uh, game is counted in the entire listing as well. And so that was a doozy indeed. There's been some squeakers. There was an 8-6 final way back when in 1972 when we were younger. 
Uh, Elgin <laughs> shut out Larkin in the mid-70s, 8 nothing, And I believe that Larkin 75 team went to the playoffs. If I'm not mis- well, they, maybe they, the Elgin team did in 75, I believe. Because mm-hmm. uh, I know Larkin's gone to the playoffs on four different occasions since we went to the 1 through 5A originally, now 6A. And uh, the Maroons have gone on eight different occasions. So we're just about ready for third quarter action here. Again, if you joined us late, Myrids Thomas with a 77-yard reception and scamper for the touchdown. Extra point was good. Then Pengi Engi on the pass from McDaniel. A 10-yarder it was, and 14-0 is the count that we have right here. It's going to be the Maroons kicking off here to start the third quarter. And we'll have to see who does the duties there because their kicker is not eligible uh, here tonight. They did not kick off to start the game. They received the football. And the Royals will get back, and uh, they'll receive it here. They'll have a host of uh, Royals down there. It looks like it's uh, it's the man of the night. Deion Johnson, of course, is going to kick <laughs> off. I knew he'd kick the extra points if they tried any, or the field goals if they tried anything. But Dion is going to kick it away. Dion, a versatile performer, a 5'9", 165-pound junior. Just seems like we've said his name dozens of times here tonight. And you know we have, Paul. Yeah, McDaniel keeps picking on him. On him as a defensive back. Dion with pretty good kick there. It's going to bounce right to one of the Larkin Royals. Picked up at about the 18-yard line. Going to scamper and fall ahead to just across the 30 to the 31. And nice pick up that time. That was. And the Royals will start up and set up shop at that point. I didn't catch that number, did you? Ted Jones, number 21. Ted uh, Jones returning Dion Johnson. Ball. Last week's off. game, we watched the game from the sideline. The Royal Ted's dad line. is a great avid uh, First and ten Royals. follower, of course, of the Royals. Ted Jones is a fine receiver. He's caught some long passes on the air. He's 5'8", 155, and he at one point was a running back for Coach Krieger and the troops. So here they go from their own 31-yard line. It is going to be Damon McDaniel going to... Set up things once again, going to hand it off to Heiser. Goes over to left guard, left tackle. He's going to pick up about five-plus yards. Heiser, 5'8", 175, Matt, uh, junior. Game. Again, it was a uh, substantial lead rushing yardage-wise for the Larkin Royals. They were over 100 yards at 108, I believe you told us uh, right. there, Paul, for the first half, so they continue to churn yeah, that out. And that was a pickup of five. Looks like at number the Royal 56, Robert yard Ross in on the stop over on that far side. His reward, Robert's coming out right now. Trots out to the sideline. Going to get a word or two from Coach Stevens. Second and five it is now. Backfield remains the same. Heiser, Myrens got to tread up here on the near side slot. Jeremy tread up, and it's going to be the handoff once again to Heiser. Going to do the same thing, but not as mm. much. Well, he Matt bullies Heiser his way carrier. across the 40 and perhaps for the first down. Looks like he'd be stopped for about a one or two yard pickup. Then he spun around left to right, fell forward, and does indeed. Uh, let's Heiser see, he's going to be just first short. Down yardage. Just short. He will be at that first down. Andy, well, from, Andy Graff, number 65, and on the stop. From our angle, it always looks like the ball's much further along. They're going to measure, so I don't look like a complete buffoon here, Paul. <laughs> but it should be, uh, looks like it's going to be short the way it is. Let's see, it is right there. If the, uh, our ref would move that right knee, it would be a first down. I've been justified, just First like that. Ball. Royals. There you go. First and ten it is. On the That's second carry, that time by Matt run. Heiser. You don't have to go to the eye doctor next week. No, Jeff. no, although the eye chart here that we have, <laughs> a Peggy Angie and <laughs> tackle that number 80 for the Maroons. <laughs> Coco Thung Sakun. That's a name. <laughs> That's a name. I haven't seen Coco here tonight. No, Coco's We've had not a cup a... of Coco. But <laughs> first and 10 it is, old 41-yard line. Coco's on the sidelines, though. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> They're handed off to Heiser. He's going to go right side this time. He's across yeah, the 45 to about the 48-yard line. Royals are churning it out. We saw this last week in the rain game. They really came out and just churned the yardage out and came away with three touchdowns, 19 points. John, well, a gain of about eight Monday, yards on the play Miller. for Heiser. Tackled made by number 31, Matt Becker. Heiser's going to go out after three Second consecutive and carries. That should bring him Jermaine Portier. Sharp, unless I, I'm told differently by you. Second, uh, two at the Royal Portier. Portier. It is Mr. Sharp. That's a substantial number of yards for this year. Should be number 30. Yep. Here's a man in motion. It's going to be Myrants, and Sharp's got the football. Sharp's headed near side. He's not hmm. going very far. Going to be knocked down right there, just shy of midfield, as you saw. Nice play by Corey Hodges on an open field trip up. Jermaine he was Sharp, finally brought carrier. down on the play by number 20, Deion Johnson, but credit Hodges with the trip. You joined us late. Larkin's got the advantage, 14-0. We've got 9.30 remaining in the third quarter. Appreciate you being aboard here on Jones and Cable. High school football action, the Crosstown Classic, if you might. The uh, Town Jug Series, if you will. All knotted up going into this game at 15 wins each. 
Royals have the advantage here. As we mentioned, Heiser's back in there. He'll bounce and bounce and get substantial yardage there across Heiser midfield to about the 46 of the Maroons. The Maroon Deion Johnson in on a stop. Yard. Also number 61, Don Miller in on the stop for, uh, for the uh, Maroons. Heiser, the durable back that he is. Don Miller's 5'10", 195, a senior. He's a nose guard and often also an offensive lineman, we should say. So it's going to be first and 10, another first down there. Cross midfield, as you see, about the 47-yard line of the Maroons. It's Heiser in backfield. Myron Thomas on the far side. In the slot, it's uh, tread up, and it's going to be a keeper by McDaniel going near side. He's going to run out of bounds and lose a couple. He's brought out by a host of men there. It's Heister, one of them, and you saw being number 74 on your screen. McDaniel thrown for a loss. And a couple of the guys. It is a, a loss that time. You know, they were having such success going forward. That kind of uh, side to side motion number. that time, Paul, was to the benefit of the Royals. Yeah, but McDaniel kept that one in good pursuit on the part of the uh, Elgin Maroons on this near side. But you're right, number 21, also Corey Hodges in on the stop on this near side besides Seister. So here we go. Five, They're going to line up and tread up. It is going to be in the uh, near slot situation. Heiser, Myron Thomas, is trend up in motion. Right to left, a handoff is to Myron Thomas. Myron bounce around a couple of men. He's across the 40 to about the 36-yard line. Picks up 12 Myron yards, Thomas, does Myron okay. Thomas. Tackle made by number 21, Corey Hodges. Myron has had three or two consecutive 100-yarders. How many does we uh, does he have for the night? Well, like let's see. He's got uh, 32 so far plus 12. That makes it 44. Yeah, we'll have to go some play. unofficially. 44 yards. We've got 750 remaining in the, the third stanza here at beautiful Memorial Field on what's turned out to be a very nice weather night after it was rainy on the last Friday. It's McDaniel looking over the situation once again. Third into it is hands off to Heiser. Left side, Matt bounces. Matt keeps going. He's across, gets the first down. Across the 30 he is to about, I'm going to say, the 26. That becomes the portion of the field that's kind of tough to see the line markers because there's, well, the grass is all worn out from all the football and soccer activities this late into the year. But Matt did get that first down. It's a gain of about 20. About, about as much as 20. So he's at the 28-yard line, Matt is now. Matt's going to challenge that 100-yard barrier here tonight before we're out of here. First and 10 it is for the Larkin Royals. A long drive to open up the third quarter. Heiser once again. This time the Hankies fly, and that probably will be against the Royals. And they're already walking back. Let's see what the indication is. It's like holding called against the holder of the Larkin. So they're going to bounce back. And coming in for the Larkin, uh, for the Elgin Maroons, we should say quickly, is Joe Linsky. Is he coming in? And let's see. That is the holding call. That'll take some of the air out of the balloon. Brings it back to about the 38-yard line. Should make it a first and 20 for the Royals. With seven minutes remaining here in the third quarter. Second penalty called against Larkin. See if they abandon the uh, running game here to try to strike quickly. It's going to be the handoff to Myron's Thomas after the fake to Heiser. Myron's going near side, bouncing around. He's going to be across the 30-yard line to about the, the 29, play. pickup of about nine yards. Tackle made by number 61, Kai, uh, correction, Don Miller in on the stop, number 61. So Myron's now over that 50-yard mark. As he picked up, they're going to say, they might give him 10 there, but in reality, it should be, it's 9 plus at best. But it is now second 11. They take away the one yard on the scoreboard from their 29-yard line of the Maroons. Larkins recuddle and bring it up with 6-18 now remaining. There's the handoff, and there's a whistle beforehand. Some kind of movement, most likely on the offense, going to bring that back. Yeah, it's illegal procedure. Rose will bring it back, set up a second and 16. Uh, Larkin's starting to shoot themselves in the foot. Illegal that used to be a problem with the Elgin Maroons over the years start, is they would go on long scoring drives and then shoot down. themselves in the foot with Fire penalties and now Larkin's doing it on this drive. Oil. Yeah, I was watching some of the games that uh, you did last year, Paul, and, uh, and uh, many 16. drives were uh, very long drives, but then they'd get close, get close to the red zone, if you will, go back the other way. But the uh, Larkin Royals still have control and they're, they're taking time off the clock extensively here as we're down to six minutes in the third quarter. Trent up in motion, handoff goes to Heiser. No, he faked me out to Myron's Thomas. Myron's on the near side. Nice ball handling that time by McDaniel. The fake to Heiser, then to Myron's. And that is going to be at about the 23-yard line for Myron's. Not too shabby. It's a gain of about 10 after that penalty. Seems to be his par for the course here. 10, 9, 11, 12 in that area in the second half with good tough yardage also from Matt Heiser. 
has been this drive. Thomas and Heiser together for the uh, Royals. Third and five it is from the 24. They hand off now to Heiser. He'll go right side. He's going to be getting that first down, perhaps. Heiser the ball carrier. I think he's got it as he picked up substantial yardage just falling ahead using that 5'8", 175-pound frame of his. Gain of nine on the play. Tackle made by number 20, Deion, Deion Johnson. Johnson. But again, going over that right side, Ed McQuillan, Kevin Lester, all those guys are on that right side. Angie Angie at the tight end. Dave Vitale, the fine center, of course. It's a very good offensive line. Jeremy Hapling. We watched the game with his dad last week. He's on the left side. Good offensive line it is for the Royals. On the handoff, not too Man, much there. The we'll see where they mark this. And picked up about a yard, did the Royals. Tackle made by number 74, Mark Seister. Going to be second and nine from the 14-yard line for the Maroons. They've taken yeah, the entire the quarter here, second have the Royals, nine. and we're down to 440 and counting. Royals have scored a couple of times in the first half, and they have the 14-nothing advantage as they break huddle and trot quickly up to the line of scrimmage. See how they play that there. They might throw right, but that wouldn't seem to make sense here, although there's going to be Thomas in action, and it's going to be a flag again, so it's going to be all for naught. It's just a couple Thomas of yards, but it's going to be a violation against the Larkin really Royals. The referees the quickly concur, and so does Paul. Yeah, and holding, a holding. Holding against Larkin, but they had Myron Thomas on a misdirection again. So they'll bounce it back. Number 74, Mark Seister in on the stop. Seister having a good job on the defensive line tonight. Nice game. I think we've called his uh, name defensively more than anyone else here tonight for Coach Stevens and the troops. He's a good-looking kid, an underclassman, one of the younger members of the Maroons, a, a junior, 6'4", 210. So here we go. Let's see where they set this up now, because I'm not Ooh, sure. And we decided exactly oh, where it's going to be. There's the ball memory. coming back so our way, if you might. Oil. I think it's from the spot of the infraction is what they're going to rule it. So it's going to end up about a second down, 20 yards to go. On about what would look to be the 24-yard line. I guess we're going to decide. Is that right? Second yep. We, are, aren't we? yep. The yeah, scoreboard hasn't caught up yet. 24. And that's in that worn-out portion as you look at your television set at home. They, uh, it's become like an infield portion of uh, a ballpark that plays both football and Baseball, it would seem. There, the misdirection play, and uh, McDaniel still has it. It's a pass to the near side to Sharp. Sharp falls down quickly with little or no gain, I would think. He might have, they well, about at the same line of scrimmage. It, it is. Like. No gain on that play. Tackle made by number 23, uh, David Rapp on the near side. Linebacker Rapp, 5'11", 160, and Junior as well did that. Sharp caught it, fell on his tracks. Third and 19, it's going to turn out to be from the 24-yard line. Certainly a passing situation here now. Although, we'd almost be in the area where Ryan Johnson could give this a go. Although it would be about, about a 40-yarder at this point, 41-yarder. Ryan missed a 34 and a 33-yard field goal in recent weeks for the Larkin Royals. Here we go, 3.18 remaining. Clock continues to tick. Third and 19 for the 24. Thomas in motion. It's going to be McDaniel with the football. McDaniel steps up in the pocket, throws Uh-oh. it away. I'm not sure who he was headed for. Any idea, Paul? Uh, number 22, Demetrius Roberts was in the neighborhood, but the pass, if he is going down that sideline, the pass intended on that near side by number, I believe it's number 11, James Johnson on the near side, but that went incomplete. All right, let's see if they just try another fourth down play here or try to boot it into the coffin corner. Heiser's, uh, no, that's Salinas coming in and Johnson going out. So that would mean that they would uh, be going for it. Fourth and 19. They're already up by two touchdowns, 14 to nothing. Salinas will line up on the near side. Myron Thomas will be in the slot. Heiser in backfield. Jeremy Tread up on the far side. He's in motion now, coming your way. Here's going to be McDaniel near side with a moving pocket. He'll toss it into the end zone, and it's Thomas. Oh! Myron Thomas, who had a fingernail grabber earlier in the game, just missed that one. It was off the fingertips, fell out of bounds, and he ends up right there. You can see him under Jones and her cable camera. A bit distraught, but oh so close. He had one miracle maw, but not a second one so far tonight. Single coverage by number 23, David Rapp on this near side, but as you said, just juggled off of Thomas's fingertips incomplete, so... Go over on downs, the first and 10 for the Elgin Maroons at their own 24. So no break huddle at 3.03 remaining. Here's a big series of downs now for Gomez and the troops. If he can uh, get something going here, and you want to keep the football away from Larkin because Larkin churned nearly nine minutes off that timepiece on that substantial drive. They didn't score, but if you can bounce nine minutes away and you have the lead, 
from the uh, scoreboard, you're going to win a game. Gomez sets up the troops. First and 10 from his own 24. It's going to be the pitch back to Corey Hodges. He's running near side. Going to be knocked out of bounds Corey is Corey. The ball Corey's uh, at the running back position for the first time in several weeks. Has not really had all that much fun here tonight, Paul. Knocked out of bounds by Jermaine Sharp, and they're going to give him about... Maybe as much as five. Can about be? five yards. So he did a pretty good job on that. That's been Corey's run here tonight. They sweep left, if you might. We saw that away from uh, our vantage point here in the first half, now coming towards you here in the second half of play. He's got eight carries for 28 yards unofficially. All right. Not too bad for Corey, but at the same time, he's uh, used to exploding one and getting some uh, good yardage out of that. Second and five it is from his own 30-yard line. It's uh, going to be Gomez dropping back, and Corey is going to get the football on the far side, and Corey, he's going to be brought down. Uh, he's going to be brought back almost to the see where they mark it here. Probably about the 28. Can that be right? Uh, let's see. Yeah, they've got it down at about the 28, so call it a loss of about two. Third and six it will be as we settle in here. Third and seven. That's uh, Chad, our director, uh, with the stats there. He wants to make it third and seven, so let's just see what happens. We'll ignore the scoreboard. 222 remaining. Third quarter action. The Maroons have got to make this first down hang on to this football for a while, so it's serious time for these guys. Gomez sets the troops, going to drop back, and he will toss it on the far side, and ah. it is, is it intercepted on that far it side is. by Larkin? It is. That's Jermaine Gomez Sharp passed. with the interception on the far side. My heavens, that was a line drive toss that Sharp just chucked the, stuck the chest out a little bit, if I can say that. 6-2-1-90, that powerful chest, and came away with it. That's the second turnover for the Maroons tonight. One on a fumble, and now the interception. Gomez looking at that far side, the only person in the area, Jermaine Sharp, number 30, and Sharp fell out of bounds, but it's going to be a first down for the Larkin Royals at the Elgin 31-yard line. So that's how things set up with 2.05 remaining here in the third quarter. McDaniel brings him up once again. He's got Heiser directly behind him in uh, backfield. He'll hand it off to Heiser. Heiser, center of the field, not too much to go. Spins around, however, does Matt. Falls Heiser forward for more than five yards. That is a true meeting of a hard-nosed running back in Matt Heiser. Nick Cazada, number 41, in on the stop for the Maroons, but Heiser gained six. So it's going to be about a second and short five is what we have here, or long four, if you might, from the 25-yard line. Once again, they're striking almost on pay dirt as they were unable to uh, bring it in last time and turn the football over on downs. A little confusion there by McDaniel. He's cupping his hands. I thought he was going to call a timeout. Instead, he was just shouting instructions to his teammates. Hands it off to Heiser. This time goes left, but he is uh, barricaded, if you might, by a host of Maroons. Number 74, big uh, Mark Seister again. Brought him down. Seister would get our defensive award right now for his good play for the uh, Maroons. Third and four it is, another big play for the Maroons, although at this point you would think that Larkin would use both downs, the third and fourth, to get that first. We're less than one minute remaining in the third stanza. 14-0, Larkin on top. Tread up in motion, near side to far. Hand off it goes to Thomas. Thomas will be short of the first down, then we see the flags of fly. That's probably going to be a hold, one would think, somewhere in the offensive line, the way that was thrown, or a clip. Yeah, they're calling it a clip uh, block below the block below the waist called against Larkin. So At that point, back. somebody thrust their body into the pile a little bit late, and they're going to bring that back again. Now they'll set up a third and long for the Royals. As we approach the end of the third quarter on this uh, crosstown rivalry night here on Jones Inner Cable, here is truly Jeff Myers along with Paul Lepic. Delighted that you're aboard here, and we appreciate uh, what's going on. 14 nothing is the count, and we move that back to the 40 ball. That's going to be a big 15-yard penalty. That big, uh, that's uh, a tough one to say the least. But Larkins, uh, let's see what they can do here. And even in this situation, they'd have a couple of downs. One would think to get it closer. They won't uh, try to kick the field goal at this point. I don't know if they'll try to put it in the coffin corner. Here it is, 21 seconds, time running. Trent up far side to near side, man in motion. Dropping back to the near side, it's going to be McDaniel. Tosses long to Myrants over his fingertips. Myrants ends up on the backside, almost made a great lunging desperation pass. He was oh so close, like so far away on that one, ball. Yeah, it's the same play again. McDaniel calls the, uh, the, the uh, corner pattern. And Thomas, again, just gets slightly overthrown. 
McDaniel now five for 12 on the night as far as passing. Myrance looks like, uh, I don't know, the shadow there at times as he comes to the near side of the field where the lights are not as, as strong here at Memorial Field with the dark trousers. He seems to disappear almost. <laughs> well, I tell you, he's got his man beat two times, but McDaniel to overthrow him twice. They're going to kick it away here, Paul. Try to get the coffin corner for probably the last play of this third stanza almost, although it's going to roll dead probably with about two That's ticks left in there. Nice kick. That's what he's trying to do. Well, he'd probably like to get it inside the 10, but he booted it up. Got it to about, what, 20? About the 25. 25. Two seconds remain here. There's going to be the uh, two and one in the final tips of the third quarter. And that's going to be where we're going to leave you right now. At the end of three quarters, it's Larkin 14, Elgin nothing. Let's take a timeout. We're back after this. Nanny is getting a hot meal every day. The Rosenthal's have a place to share their memories. Andrea has somewhere to go after school. And the McKay family, you're keeping them together. Truth is, by supporting today's United Way, you're helping people who need help in our community. Whether it's food for the hungry, shelter for the homeless, or just lending a hand, you can make a difference you can see. Like getting Peter off the streets and giving Jesus the chance to stand on his own. Support United Way. Make a difference right here in your own backyard. Be the difference. See the difference. Exciting high school football action coming your way on Jones Intercable on this night. The Town Jug Series contest. Elgin against Larkin. Always a doozy. Larkin has the 14-0 count. Paul will take a look at a couple of stats here in a moment, but we're ready for fourth quarter action. The Bruins have got it. First and 10 on their own 24-yard line. Again, they've got to get something going offensively. Gomez is going to drop it off to Corey Hodges. Corey coming near side. Can he get around the corner? No, sir. He's brought down by a train that we call Jermaine Sharp. <laughs> Number 30, but Corey Hodges, I think he just possibly got back to the line of scrimmage. So we're going to call, well, no, they're going to give him about a yard. So credit him with a yard gain on that play for Hodges. Well, I'll tell you, the big horse uh, for the Larkin Royals in that third quarter, Matt Heiser, nine carries, 61 yards in that third quarter alone. Wow, that's good duty. And Sharp has uh, had a good uh, second half here defensively and also uh, intercepted a pass on defense as well, so did a nice job. Run a few plays offensively as well. Gomez will drop back. Going to fake it to Corey, and he's going to be smothered in back court field there, we should say. I'm going to switch sports on us. <laughs> down to the 15. I don't know. Did a flag go down, or did they just mark that? Uh, yeah, no, just, they just marked that. Pengy Yangi in on the stop. Uh, Pengy Yangi started to do a dance, and I thought, uh oh, <laughs> there goes the handkerchief. But no, sir. Gomez faked to Corey in the same type of play that didn't work last time, and he thought, maybe I'll angle to the left here, toss it downfield, and Pengy Yangi said, no, sir, you're not going anywhere. And that's the way it was. So on the far sides here, they'll break huddle. Third and 19 for the Maroons from their own 16-yard line. Offensive lineman set up there with the arm's length away. Gomez over center. He's got things going. Gomez will drop back here. Uh -huh. he almost lost the football. He's going to throw almost into the ground there as he was being uh, brought down as he tossed it. Only person anywhere in the area, it looked like Paul, was one of the Larkin Fourth defenders out. that time. One of the linebacking crew was there. 46, Brian Melvin was out there, but also number 59, Jeremy Heffling, came over from that far side, the blind side, to uh, Gomez, put a lot of pressure on him, and just as Gomez was releasing the ball, Heffling gave him a shot. So that's why it looked like it was grounded in, but the, as you said, the, the nearest guy, number 46, Melvin. John Ramonde will boot it away for the fourth time on this night. It's but the first time in a long time, really, because he punted three times. Oh, they're going to try to block it. They got close, but he got it away nicely. John's a very good kicker. Gets it away towards uh, midfield there. It's touched by the knee of one of the Maroons, as you saw there, at about the 48-yard line it'll be. But uh, again, they were out to block that ball that came awfully close. 24-yard oh, punt. For Raimondi, this was spot at the 24-yard line, so 24-yard punt, no return. That's so Mark and Royals will take over at the Elgin 48-yard line, and they're controlling the tempo of this game, and Elgin can't really get anything moving offensively. Larkin can just keep the ball on the ground with a running clock at 10.15 left to go here in regulation. So here it is. Let's see if it'll be the pounding of Heiser. It 
and the uh, flashiness of Myron's Thomas that'll dominate here the waiting moments of this contest. Quarterback McDaniel as well is a very good athlete. Tread up in motion, hands off, it goes to Heiser right down the center of things for Matt. And he's gonna pick up about six yards for Heiser brought down by Deion Johnson and a host of Maroons. Mark, Mark Seister was on his back all the way down. So Heiser is how close to 100 yards now? He had 60 some, you mentioned, that third quarter. He had 61, plus now with six, that's 67, and at the half, I think he's over 100, because 67 and 33, he just hit 100. Yeah, you're so good with that math. What can I tell you? So 100 yards unofficially 100 yards. right there for yeah. Heiser. Yeah. And yeah. Heiser's gonna more than get over that century mark yeah. now yeah. as he Heiser carries it again. He's gonna pick up Heiser about seven down yards down and a first down, 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 down for the Larkin Royals. Boy, Heiser is just, the offensive line Back from Larkin is just blowing down. the defense of Elgin right off the line of scrimmage, and Heiser is just running with daylight. Huge Big holes either on the right side or on the left side, and Heiser with, the, with those quick pounding First lays and does his little misdirections the coming either from the right to the left, left to the right, and he's getting good yardage. James Johnson in for the Larkin Royals. He'll line up on the near side and your television set, pointing right at you there. There's the snap. McDaniel is going to toss it back words, if you will, to tread up. That would have been a fumble had it gotten away because that was back, uh, backwards, if you will, a backward lateral that would have been considered. Tread up got that on the far side and danced ahead probably just about to the line of scrimmage ball. Yeah, it didn't look like he got anything on that. But you're right, it was lucky uh, that he didn't drop that. that pass may have been Very true, backward Jeremy lateral. Treadup. McDaniel straightened up and like he was going to heave it right over the line of scrimmage. He didn't do that, and then he Michael stepped eight. back one step, tossed right. it to tread up, and that's where the action Tyson began. So that didn't go too far. So it's second and 10 right here. It does keep the clock moving at 8.25 remaining here in the fourth stanza. And once again, McDaniel with Johnson here on the near side. He's got Heiser and uh, Thomas in the back field, and Heiser's going to get it, run over right guard, and pick up a couple yards. That is Matt, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. There's Matt getting up off the pile. Mike Kyle, number 63, and on the stop, but again, a gain of four for Heiser. So he continues to do a nice job here. Again, Larkin's an interesting team this year. You might have written them off. We were talking with some of our reporter friends. I think they had written them off, Paul, when they were one in three as far as postseason possibilities are concerned. But the five alive chant certainly still alive now. And Larkin at six and three, being the uh, proud school tradition they have football-wise, could certainly get in the postseason play. It's going to be McDaniel faking. He's still got the football, almost brought down in backfield. He's going to head for the sidelines and run out of bounds. Chased out of bounds by number 75, Vince Lane. On that far side. So Vince knocked him out of bounds, as Paul said. I think he's going to lose a little bit there, is he not? It's going to... Yeah. Be on the 33-yard line. And just about like that, would that be fourth and, fourth and seven? Fourth and seven-ish. For that was 7.32 for the Maroons. That stops the clock. They've got to get their hands on that football. If you get one score here, make it 14 to seven. Anything can happen, or 14 to eight if you're going to go for two. Whatever it might be, just get that football. Stop Larkin right now is what the Maroons must do if you're rooting for those guys. Dropping back a couple steps to McDaniel. Toss it to Trinup here in the flat. Trinup's got it. First down. He's around one man. He's going to go all the way to the 11-yard line. McDaniel Jeremy pass. Trinup, who scored two Come touchdowns to last top. week, running, received that pass Demetrius in the flat Thomas, nicely and scampered and picked up a few more yards. And gain of 22 on the play, brought down by number 20, Deion Johnson, as well as number 22, Demetrius Roberts on the near side. But a big first down for the Larkin Royals. 7-17 in the running clock. They score here. I think the fat lady can sing. I think some of the folks are strolling towards the exit as we speak right now, Paul. But not you at home. You stay right there with the television set. There's going to be the handoff to Myrance Thomas. Myrance going right. Myrance into the end zone. Myrance Thomas, an 11 yard run. Danced around, danced around. We saw him score the exact play last week in the rain. And he almost went down at about the five, it looked like, Paul. Kept his balance, kept moving forward, danced his way in. Well, I tell you, misdirection play again. Thomas coming from the left side, near side on your screen, over to the far side. Nobody on that far side for the Elgin Maroons. She said he dropped down about the five-yard line, but never lost his balance, went into the end zone. OT the kick. This one will be Michael. good. And the extra point good for the third time. And Larkin now with a three-touchdown advantage. Larkin 21, Elgin nothing. 7-0-1 remain here in this tilt that gets more folks to put the wrap on and head out into a fall night 
But uh, what, what can you say? We've seen the uh, the good dominance. You know if, if Larkin doesn't make any mistakes, now they did turn the football over in the third quarter after a long drive, but if they don't toss a, uh, an interception or fumble it away or have too many penalties, they're a very consistent team, of course. Absolutely, and with ball control offense, as uh, Coach Krieger is going to be doing with his Royals, and, you know, you have great confidence in the defense, too, because he went on fourth down situations. A punt's not really going to do that much good for you. You do have a free play then on fourth down, depending on your field position. But you do have great confidence in your defense, and that's what happened right there. And Larkin's doing well right now. It's 7-1 left to go. And, of course, the Maroons are coming off a 6-4 and four season, Paul, that saw them get into the playoffs a year ago, so they know that feeling. They did lose right off the bat to Naperville North, I believe it was, was it not, 35-7. to seven. Yeah. But they did uh, get into the playoffs, so Larkin's approaching that if they can continue to win. There's going to be the on the far side, taken down there by the Maroons and brought down by a host of men. Let's check that number for the Maroons as uh, Nick... Zunda came away with that. 5'10 lad was able to get it on the far side and head towards the center of the field, and he was brought down. James Mitchell in on the stop number 86 for the Larkin Royals. All right. Well, we see Demetrius Roberts coming off the field. Demetrius hasn't carried the football much here tonight, and that's always the case when Corey Hodges plays. Corey has played and really uh, not had a chance to break away in the traditional Hodges uh, motif. And Matt Becker has been amazingly quiet for him. Becker has been stopped by no one. Really, he's picked up yardage against everybody, but not here tonight. 6.35 remain here in regulation play. Let's see if Gomez has a mind to pass, and he does. As he tosses it right here to Becker in backfield, he's going to be greeted right off the bat and brought down for a slight loss of a yard or two. Jeremy Treadup in on the stop for the Royals. Little flare pass out of the uh, backfield. Probably as a secondary pass uh, man on that one was Becker, but he wasn't able to get away at all. It's going to be big uh, Tim Martin coming in now with the play for Coach Stevens as he joins the huddle a little bit late. He's coming out is Ramonde. Lost of two on the play. So Ramonde out, as we mentioned. And here we go, second and 12, six minutes to remain in the tilt. That's Matt Kirkland here on the near side. Fine wide receiver for Gomez. If he throws, he might be looking for him. Gomez instead will look left this time, and it's going to be taken almost, almost by Tepper on the far side. Brian Tepper outstretching the arms, full form, almost came away with a nice pass. It would have been about 30 yards. Couldn't quite do it. He was open, though, Paul. Number 29, Myron's Thomas, as well as Jermaine Sharp in on the coverage on that far side for the Royals. It's a nice toss by Gomez, a little bit too much oomph to it. Nice route by Tepper. Third and Tepper's caught some passes this year. Kirkland back in. It's Tepper and Kirkland basically rotating at that wide receiver spot that bring the plays in. Sometimes with the tight ends, they rotate the plate in and plays in as well, but often the Maroons play with two tight ends. So, as I say that, they've got the speed boys in there. Tepper on the far side, near side, it is going to be Kirkland. And the handoff is going to go to, I guess, Becker, and he's going nowhere. Uh, really, that wasn't, uh, that was third and long, <laughs> and they tried to fool him, <laughs> and it didn't work. No, I don't quite understand that call, but whatever. They tried to do that, it's going to have to boo it away right there. 5.25 remaining. So Ramonde will punt for the second time here in the fourth quarter and for the fifth time on the night. And the uh, Larkin Roy is going to have pretty good field positions here because Ramundi is going to boot it away from his own 10. He does. Nice high kick as usual. It's going to bounce at about the 42. Gets a nice Elgin hop across midfield to about 44-yard line. Make it 43 maybe for the Maroons fell on that. It's a 33-yard kick. Not too shabby. He did get a great bounce. Got about a 10-yard bounce that time, but he always gets good height to his kick, which is always a factor for the team to get down underneath it. Well... Let's see here, as a few of the Larkin fans are sprinting across uh, the field, not fans, but some of the secondary personnel, I guess uh, that would be Paul. Royals with it now, clock continuing to move with 4.45 remaining. They're up 21, nothing, uh, the Larkin Royals. First and 10 on their own, 44. Handed off, Heiser. Heiser over 100 yards rushing and then some tonight. Falls forward. He's gonna pick up about four additional yards. He is uh, such a durable bat. He's got unofficially 82 Heiser yards this half alone, plus 30, and now plus 33, so that's 115 yards on the night. Heiser's got me embarrassed. I was gasping for air when we brought the equipment up the press row tonight. He can carry the football time and time again. So it's pretty darn embarrassing. 4-10 remain. Probably going to keep the football on the ground exclusively here with Coach Krieger and the Larkin Royals. 
with the three touchdown lead and pretty much everything in their command. It's going to be Heiser just bouncing off a of man and he's going to fall forward to about the 45 yard line. My goodness, Deion Johnson tried to get, to get him. He broke that tackle, finally brought down by Jeff Hammy. Jeff Hamill, number 79, and on the stop. And that's a first down, about seven more yards, six plus for Matt Heiser. And first and 10 it will be. As we mentioned, across midfield, that uh, they're going to measure there for the sake of it, just to showcase these chains. And actually, those guys in the yellow and uh, black jackets just wanted to make sure that everybody sees that they're there. That's right. That's they're right. here, and Mom can see them. Although we're not showing them. <laughs> no, well, that's right. We're just showing the backside of one of the uh, one of the referees. <laughs> there, there, there's a little bit of snippet there. A little bit of guy there, yeah. The men in the colored uh, fair, if you might. I think they were working construction crew on 59 this summer there you with, those, go. with those outfits. Now Three. they're on Schaumburg Road. Yeah, that's right. Well, <laughs> you just pick the area and there'll be something there, Paul. 345 and counting, remaining 21 nothing. Larkin on top. They're going to get the uh, town jug once again for this year. Bring it back to Larkin. And there's Myron Thomas. He might go all the way. Gets a block from the referee. He tries to go around Corey. He's brought down by Corey and another right. maroon Thomas as Thomas there, yeah. scampers upfield for about a 30-plus yard gain. Well, 36, he gets it down to about the 14-yard line, so that's about a 22-yard run for Myron's Thomas. All righty. So he's 20-plus on that for Myron's, and you know, with that long burst, Paul, he's going to be uh, approaching probably at least the 80s, one would think, 80, 80-plus. 80 he yeah. might just be knocking on that door. I have 84 yards. Stick around to the end of the game. We'll find out. Will Myron <laughs> Thomas get to the century mark? And we'll let you know before we get out of here. Thomas in motion. Near side to far. Hand off Heiser. Heiser bounces That's way in Heiser there. And Larkin on the 14 bounce now across the 10 to about the 8-yard line. He just falls forward and picks up 6 for heaven's sakes. Or 5 plus. Here comes the beef squad once again. <laughs> Big number 77, Chris Shores. I want you to tell Chris the B squad he is. Chris Shores <laughs> at 320 comes in to shore up that defense once again. Uh, very good, very he's, good. He's a big guy. Nice segue there. He looks small on your camera on your television set at home, but I believe me, he's a big guy. Look for Big number 79 there in the melee. There's going to be the handoff to Heiser. Touchdown. Gene Heiser, an eight-yard scamper with 233 remaining. Gives the Larkin Royals a 27 to nothing commanding lead. So Heiser, after all his hard work, especially here in the second half, is rewarded with pay dirt. He comes away with that touchdown. That's his first of the night. Myron yeah, Thomas has two. So Heiser, that's only fitting, Paul. And he was able to put that over. Nolte with Tread Up Holding will boot the extra point, and it is good. So he's made uh, four out of four here tonight, and it's now 28 to nothing. Boy, and that, that touchdown by Heiser, that eight-yard run, just so significant. And so uh, the, the way it's been going all night for Heiser, he just broke tackles all the way up the middle of that defensive line for the Elgin Maroons and was able to get it in there for the score. Heiser now uh, close to about 120, 130 yards, somewhere in that vicinity on the night. Just an excellent, excellent night for Matt Heiser. All right. The scoreboard man doesn't want to give that extra point to the Larkin Royals, but I know I saw it. Mm -hmm. Paul, and I think you saw it, so mm -hmm. they say I'm 27-0 up there, but it should be 28 to zip, unless we're miscalculating. You're the good man with the pencil, Paul. Uh, I have 28 to nothing. Yeah, I think all extra points have uh, yeah. gone they've, right through, and I think, good. I would think with the referee coming over at this point, uh, let's see what they have in mind here. Well, they're just going to settle in here. 233 remain. It was 14-0 uh, at the half, and now a couple of more touchdowns here in the second half. Both here in the fourth quarter have made it 28 to nothing. And it's going to be Demetrius Roberts. Like to see Demetrius run one back here. Becker on the far side. And Nick uh, Quisada has the football right now. And Nick is going to be brought down once again. And the Maroons are going to have that football at about, you know, about their own 26-yard line, maybe the 25. James Mitchell, number 86, in on the stop again for the Larkin Royals. And here we go. Let's see if they have anything left in their bag of tricks. The Maroons will fall to one and six. They will finish next to the last in the Upstate 8, one would think, this year with DeKalb beneath them. And the Larkin Royals now would move to... Uh, 
Hug. I think one of their victories, they were 3-3 in conference. One of their victories is non-conference Argo. They knocked off the Argonauts 33 to nothing a few weeks ago. Gomez back. In trouble, he gets to Corey Hodges on the far side. Corey across the 30, and he'll be stopped at about the 34-yard line. Maybe stepped out before that Gomez pass completion, though. He didn't get out of bounds, so the clock continues to move. 148 and ticking on the timepiece. Jermaine Sharpen on the stop on the far side. About seven yards, should be second and three as they turn it out. And from about the 33-yard line. And let's see if we can muster a few plays in here. They're taking out the wideouts are coming out. Both Kirkland and Tepper are coming out. So that's kind of intriguing. Looks like they're going to run for the first down here, Paul, and then begin to put the football in the air. That's the apparently what we'd see here with the three-man backfield. Gomez over center. 118 and the timepiece still going. He's going to instead, it's going to be a pass. He'll toss it into a crowd and it's going to be almost intercepted by uh, Salinas. By Salinas Art Salinas, we should say, almost came away with that. Well, oh, that was that was seemed like almost intercepted. It seemed like in that situation, everything pointed towards a quick run to get the first down, stop the clock, and you know get a new set of downs. But he still was scampering, moving this way. Here comes Kirkland and Temper back in. Well, Gomez just threw in traffic, and Salinas, I should say, had almost picked it off. So it's second and three with 112. That does stop the clock. You might as well just give it a go here. Here comes Martin. Now here comes Demetrius Robertson. Almost. Is he going to do it? Not this time. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna stay in. Oh, they're gonna Demetrius here on the slot near side. Watch number 22 on your television at home because I think he's gonna have a chance to get it if Gomez can get it that way. Demetrius is gonna get the pass. Demetrius gonna be knocked out at the 20. I don't want to play Harry Carey. I was telling you, <laughs> Roberts came in stationed in the slot, and then suddenly the old hail mary toss came his way, and Demetrius got a long gainer. 47-yard pass officially from the 33 of Elgin down to about the 20 yard line is where the referee is standing. So a 47 yard pass play. Good enough for a first down at the 20 and the clock moving. This would be great, we should say, for the Maroon fans to come away with a score here in the final second. There's Gomez, he's in trouble. Gonna be brought down. Brought down, let's check that number, Paul, because that was a good play. Tackle, I think, by number 58. There's a penalty on the play. It looks like it might go against Larkin here. But uh, brought down by number 50, maybe 59, Jeremy Huffling. See what it is. It's going to go against Larkin with the reaction by the Elgin Maroons. We're down to less than one minute remaining in this contest. Uh, 45 seconds, and it's 28 to nothing, although the scoreboard refuses that extra point, uh, Paul. Could be on sportsmanlike conduct called against Larkin. It's a biggie. Might be with that, with the, the yeah. sacking of the quarterback, what yeah. we would call roughing the quarterback in, in other leagues. And that's probably what that's going to be there as the, you have to protect the quarterback. And let's see what we have here. So they're inside that red zone. They're going to come down, what, at the... About the 13-yard line because they have the distance of the goal. 13-yard line, 38 seconds remaining. Clock is running. Maroons want to get on this scoreboard. Got to Demetrius Roberts in the far side in the left slot. Also, Ramonde going to throw left if he can do it. Gomez headed that way. Gomez tosses it to Roberts. Another flag of fly end. Pass Gomez caught, though, by number 22, Demetrius Roberts. But let's see what the flag says. Holding against Elgin. Holding against Elgin. There, it's official. Rules when Paul says action. it, you know it's official. So they're going to bounce back Holy. here a little bit. Still got 23 seconds remaining in the tilt. Let's see where they mark that to a T. The original line of scrimmage was about the 12, near the 13. And let's see where we settle up here. It's going to be about two more pass plays. It's going to be this game, what would think. And the uh, Maroons are ready to go, and the refs haven't placed. You can see some of the fans beginning to mose out there a little bit on the far side. It's back to the original line of scrimmage at the 20. That's the 20 it is. Here we go, Paul, and Gomez with the football. He's going to throw near side to Roberts behind him by about a step. Incomplete stops the clock at 14 Incomplete. seconds. But now they can set up shop a little bit. And really, the, the way things uh, go in high school ball, might as well uh, throw it right into the end zone here and see if you can come away with that six-pointer. Sure, might as well. You have nothing to lose, and it gets the goose egg off the scoreboard. So here's what we set up on the 20. Going to call this fourth down. Fourth and 10 they're going to go with here. And Gomez over center. Could be the final play of the game. Now the scoreboard's caught up with that extra point, finally, after we lectured. Gomez looking, Gomez running. He's across the line of scrimmage, going to be brought down, and that's just going to be about the game right there. And Tom, quick timeout, I hear uh, the PA man tell us, with five Gomez seconds remaining. Walker. The Maroons have called a timeout, but they're going to run out of downs. That was fourth down, wasn't it? 
So I don't think they would have called a timeout. It looks like it's fourth down right now. But fourth down now. Four, number 46, Brian Melvin, just got Gomez by his by the back of his shirt. He was able to kind of get him off balance before another uh, Larkin Royal brought him down for the tackle. Calling a gain of about six on the play the for Gomez. Almost followed that shirt to the laundry. He wouldn't give up on it, would he? So it is fourth down. This now becomes now or never. This is like the recently the uh, sixth game of the, the White Sox. No tomorrow if we lose. That's right. Here there's no clock if we don't score so after this play. Doesn't strike out. Yeah, boy. <laughs> I was in attendance in that game recently. Karkovice on second base with a, a line shot. Don't move, Ron. <laughs> then and the alarm clock rang off. The, uh, yeah, the woes. He was sleeping. <laughs> Joe Jackson in the uh, memory of. I guess oh we can't win until we put him in the hall is what they say. Five seconds remain. This is final play time here for this uh, Brown uh, Town Jug series, we should say. And it's going to be... The halfback option to Corey Hodges. We tried it earlier. Corey, the toss to Gomez. Did he get it? No. Is it knocked down? Is it intercepted? Neither. Either way, that's the end of the game. The old trickery play didn't go. Gomez to Corey, and Corey tried to get it back to Pat on the far Steve, I should say, on the far side. I think Pat Gomez is the former twin. Steve Gomez couldn't come away with it, and that's going to do it. Well, the game is over. The Town Jug Series this year's game is won by the Larkin Royals. They now have the advantage in games 16 to 15 in this great series. They did it convincingly. As you see the players exchanging uh, hands right now, it was Larkin 28 and Elgin nothing. We will take a time out, but we're going to come back and get a chance for Paul Lepic to give us all the semi-official stats by then. So here again, it's Larkin 28, Elgin nothing. We'll take a time out. We're back after this. Great pass to Scott Williams. I'm Scott Williams of the Chicago Bulls. Early in my career, people recognized my talent and gave me a helping hand. I'm Lolita Didrickson, director of the Illinois Department of Employment Security. We have a new program to find jobs for people on the city's west side. We need Chicago area employers to help us by hiring at least one person through this program this year. The Bulls are helping, and you can too. Call us with one job today and give one person a hand up. Back once again, you still can see the uh, players exchanging the handshakes. As you know, Coach Stevens, on the right side of your screen, he always uh, gets the players around in the circle to talk with them a little bit. There's Larkin Royals doing the same thing around Coach Krieger. Larkin now improving their record to four and three. They have two games left on the regular season, both here at home. One is against Streamwood. The Elgin Maroons you see right there, they fall to one and six. This is really the tough part of the year where they have a tough game next week as uh, we get a chance to talk with you against St. Charles, one of the finest teams in the state and rated in the USA Today. So that's very difficult for the Elgin Maroons in that one and six campaign. So their great mentor, Coach Stevens, who's now in his second tenure of duty with the Elgin Maroons, gets a chance to talk it over with the troops. 28 to nothing was the final here tonight. Larkin winning. Paul Lepic has those stats. Well, I tell you, the big gun on the, on the night, Matt Heiser for the Larkin Royals, 18 carries on the night. 127 yards. He had only three carries, 33 yards at the half. He had 15 carries, 94 yards in the second half. Total 18 carries, 127 yards. Myron's Thomas had at the half 10 carries for 32 yards, added five carries for 52, ends up with 15 carries for 84 yards. On the scoreboard, you saw Larkin 28 and Elgin nothing. Let's recap the scoring at the 155 mark. 77-yard touchdown pass from McDaniel to Thomas, that being in the first quarter. Larkin takes the 7-0 lead, the point after attempt being good. In the second quarter, the 28-second mark, a 10-yard pass from Damon McDaniel to Amara Pangiyangi. Uh, made the score 13 to nothing. The point after attempt good. Made it 14 to nothing, and that's where we ended up at the half. Third quarter was no scoring, but in the fourth quarter at the 7:01 mark, an 11-yard Thomas run. He was started on the left side, went the misdirection over to the right side, uh, bounced off a couple of tackles, and went into the end zone for a 20 to nothing lead. The point after attempt was good, making it 21 to nothing. And then at the 233 mark, and how deserving this is, Matt Heiser on an eight-yard touchdown run right up the middle. 27 to nothing, the point after attempt being good. 28 to nothing, the final score. And I tell you, Jeff, if we had to have our star player of the game or something to that effect, it would be Matt Heiser tonight. What a workhorse. 18 carries, 127 yards on the night. No question about that. As you said, the second half really uh, just completely dominated by the offensive line of Larkin. We shouldn't forget that. And by the running of Matt Heiser. So for the first time in three years, Larkin has won this game. 
It was three years ago they knocked off the Maroons in regular season 26-14. to Then they had that wonderful playoff game in November of 90. By a 21-20 count, Larkin won that. Then Elgin's won the last couple of years. But you can see the happy uh, Larkin uh, team getting high five from everybody. Congratulations as the place begins to move out. On the far side there is where the Larkin Royal fans sat on this night. And that's a very atypical situation as Larkin here at Memorial Field on this evening was the visiting team and the Elgin Maroons were the home. I think we've said it all, Paul. It's been a delight to working with you. I know we'll see you at uh, high school uh, basketball events, I think, through mm -hmm. the season, will we not? And maybe uh, if the Larkin Royals goes into playoff competition, we'll see them too. No question about it. That's right. They play on that Wednesday after the season. And they're looking good for that. And, and that Five Alive chant around Larkin High School. You can see the guys getting together right there, really enjoying that Five Alive chant all the way. Is something to look forward to. As Dave Vitell and the troops there, they're going to have a chance a little Gatorade, I think. I like Mike <laughs> as they wrap things up here. But that simply means they're 60% of the way there now, Paul. They've won three of the five games they must win to do it. They've got two more games remaining. All games are here at Memorial Field. If you get a chance, come on out and root the Larkin Royals on. The Elgin Maroons will be on the road uh, uh, for their game next played, and they fall to 1-6. and six. Again, repeating that final, it was uh, Larkin 28 and Elgin Nothing. We thank the wonderful crew that we have here, of course, and the hard work that they do as we're going to usher ourselves out of the stands just like that fandom right there. Paul, we'll see you uh, for the playoffs then. Absolutely. Looking forward to it, Jeff. Good working with you. So I appreciate that and always delighted to see you. Larkin 28, Elgin Nothing. We're going to say so long and we'll see you at the next event and uh, we'll see you up the road. Sea of Galilee. What an opening for my tour in Israel. Looks like I'm in for a thrill. Hi, I'm John from Philadelphia. From now on, it's just me and my bicycle in the exciting land of Israel. Hello, I'm Sandra from London. This is my first day in Israel, and I'm here to see it all. The Galilee's first on my agenda. All I have to do is rent a car and be on my way. There's so much to see and visit on the shores of the Sea of Galilee. As a vacation resort, it's all anyone can ask for. But there's a lot more to it. In this area, history itself speaks from every corner. Everywhere you look, you find fascinating historical sites and important holy places like Taba and Capernaum. This is where the famous biblical stories actually took place. I just love to paint everything in sight. The Jordan River Rapids are great fun. You wouldn't believe it, but only 60 minutes drive away on Mount Hermon, there's actually a ski resort. I can't stop taking pictures in this country. I feel like I'd like to share everything I see with everyone back home. I've always believed that an exciting day should end with a good meal, a good drink, and good company. And there's plenty of all three right here in Tiberias. Beautiful jewelry. It's just